Hey, this is Todd Dammit Kearns from Slash featuring Miles K and the Conspirators, Bruce Kulick, and so much more. And you are listening to the hottest podcast in the land, Shout It Out Loud Cast, with Tom and Zeus. The year is 1981. The artist is Ozzy Osbourne, and the album is Diary of a Madman. Welcome to episode 51 of the Album Review Crew, where we will be reviewing this legend of hard rock and heavy metal in guitar virtuosity. Soon we will be joined by the great Zach Throne to break down this album. But right now, Zeus, it's me and you, brother. Yeah, we're just going to do a little feedback, and then we'll bring Zach on. Uh, let's start off, Tom, with our poll last time we did the Who's Next. Yes. Um, by the Who. Uh, so what do you got there? What do you got there? Yeah, so as always, poll, top four songs, Baba O'Reilly, Bargain, Won't Get Fooled Again, and Behind Blue Eyes. Won't Get Fooled Away get fooled away won't get fooled again runs away with the poll at 51 percent bob o'reilly comes in second at 27 percent behind blue eyes at 15 and bargain at seven this was zeus's pick a lot of people loved it people who have a taste in music loved it people who don't don't sorry welcome new listeners let's get to a couple twitter comments here Aggie Dad and Tiger Grant. As much as I love Led Zeppelin, I shockingly never gave The Who a shot. After this podcast, I just bought this vinyl due to the many classics I grew up hearing in various places, but never realized all of it was on one freaking album. Cannot wait to spin this when it gets here. Ooh, all right. Beach Boys are the goat. Regarding what was Roger going to do, he was the lead guitarist before Pete joined. He's played guitar infrequently on stage and probably isn't a virtuoso, but if they needed a second guitarist, he could have done it. I actually have no idea what he's talking about, Zeus. Who's Roger? Roger Daltrey. Oh, 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 oh. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Yeah, but regardless, he doesn't play a guitar live. I mean, he wasn't at that time. If you go watch My Wife and you see the live performances on it on YouTube and yep. stuff, he's just dancing in the background. Well, now, just announced, is Roger Daltrey's acoustic tour. He's coming to Boston. It's just going to be him with a guitar. And I don't know. Maybe we'll go. Maybe we won't. Who knows? If we do, we'll talk about it. But I don't know. Cody Brunette, the Who has always been a hits band for me. But after this episode, I'm going to check out more material from them. Yeah, we like to hear that. And our buddy Steve gives his rankings of songs, albums, and covers. As always, we love to see that. Ryan M., great episode, terrible album. Never been a fan of The Who, but you made me interested in the Kitty Diddler Band. (laughs) What? The Kitty Diddler Band. Okay. Thank you for your Pete Townsend commentary, Ryan M. And that's the brilliance of Twitter, Zeus. All right. Let's go to the Book of Face. On our Facebook page itself, uh, Charles Rusner, Pete Townsend's favorite Who song is The Kids Are All Right. Oh, it was okay. research. Oh, yuck. Uh, oh, boy. John Koza says, wow, finally a classic hard rock album. Great pick, Zeus. Some of the most iconic classic rock songs on this album. I have the LP and got it on high rotation with the other hard rock band in the 70s. I think Deep Purple in Rock and Deep Purple Fireball predated Who's Next as the first hard rock album. I don't think that's accurate. I think there were other. Sabbath Sabbath was out before then. Yeah, it's a nice take, though. I ain't know anybody waving the flag for the who. It's all right. Yeah. Let's go to Loudcasters. The taxman, Anthony Barone. Yeah, abcpainc.com. That's uh, right. This was on my list to pick, too. Well, cross it off, brother. Uh, Gary Cap, Hall of Famer Gary Cap. 
Oh, and Hall of Famer, the tax man, Tony Barone as well. That's right. Fuck that up. Best Who album by far. Uh, another Hall of Famer in a row, Jay Scott from the Hook Rocks. Wow. You look disheveled. Great choice. So happy you didn't do another unlistenable shit-ass Europe album. Man. Uh, Joey, don't call me Ray Romano Stubbles Romanic. Fuck, man. ARC definitely keeps us listeners on our toes. Last month, Europe. This month, The Who. One being one of the architects of rock and roll and actual living legends. The other, one hit wonder that somehow managed a 40-year career off one annoying song. Point being, we never know what we're going to get. Thanks, Forrest Gump. That's right. It's true. Except for this one, you knew what you were going to get because this is the Patreon pick, Diary of a Madman. Yes. Daniel Hall of Houston says, Who's next in Quadrophenia are possibly the greatest two records in a row. Before Keith Moon got fat and drugged out, he was a beast. Dude hit so fucking hard. Entwistle turned his bass up so loud, he invented a new style of playing. Just the sheer volume of the band live in the 70s makes them my favorite rock band ever. Great job, guys. Cool. And I'm going to hop over to YouTube. The great Marty White. Well, great day in the morning. I never thought I'd hear this album reviewed on this show. When I was 14, cousin tried to get me into this group. She played Bob O'Reilly, and after 30 seconds, I said, keyboards, turn this off. Then a year later, I caught this random documentary, and the band blew up a drum set and smashed a guitar on the Smothers Brothers. Then it was a few years later, <laughs> and they on a TV interview. They were unkept, obnoxious, rude, and scruffy. Then the next clip was live, and there it was, the keyboard. What the fuck? And this tall, scraggly guy beating the shit out of a tambourine. And I thought, this is the band for me. With lyrics like, give me a bodyguard, a black belt judo expert with a machine gun. It's no wonder no one can understand a thing Entwistle says. Nice. And he's talking about the lyrics from my wife. So, uh, Tom, that's what I got. All right, let's quickly go through a few comments on Instagram and emails. So on Instagram, we got Flaming Skull Dude 88 Good show. I think the Who is underrated. They deserve to be up there with Zeppelin. Moon is a fucking madman. I love when he tapes his headphones to his head. John Entwill has to be the greatest bass player ever. And then we'll go over to emails. We got one here from our buddy Angelo Capasso, who we haven't heard from a while. Angelo, nice to hear from you, buddy. I saw the Who three times, but without Moon. But Starkey Ringo's son is a fantastic drummer, oh, yeah. just like Dad. One one concert was Daltrey solo playing Tommy with Pete Townsend's brother playing guitar and backup vocals. He doesn't look like his brother, but sings just like him. Quadrophini was also awesome. Not original tour, but they came to Mohegan and played the entire album. Minus the kitty porn chapter, I would place the Who in my top 20 bands of all time. By the way, Sabbath was heavier when Who's Next albums came out, but still a talented bunch of guys. Peace out, Angelo. Yeah. Agreed with that. We can skip the kiddie porn talk now. We're done with that. <laughs> and that's our uh, feedback on the who. Awesome. Yeah. Let's take a quick little break. And uh, we'll be right back. All right. We're back. Uh, Tom, you ready to bring Zach in? Let's go. And now we're going to bring in the great Zach Throne to join us to break down the classic Diary of a Madman. Zach, welcome back to the show. This time we're talking Ozzy. What's up, buddy? Yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you, you guys. Awesome. Zeus, who picked this album? The uh, Our Patreon listeners finally got a good album out there. For hey, stop it, finally. They picked moving <laughs> pictures and master of puppets. They picked good albums. Yeah. <laughs> um anyway but they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they picked uh diary of a madman i couldn't be happier uh the diary of a madman we all have our own thoughts um why don't tom you lead us off how'd you get into the album yeah so for me this was actually my very first experience with solo ozzy it was this album not blizzard so i have as I mentioned a lot of times, this I have a, a sister who's four years older than me, and we grew up obsessed with music, record stores, MTV, and 
we listened to everything. And I remember this specifically. She got the 45 single of Flying High Again. And I, oh. Yeah, and I'll never forget that. And I heard it. And the artwork on that, if you Google it online, the artwork on that is kind of like an outtake of the photo session of the album, which the cover, which we'll talk about. And I remember hearing that and I was like, what is like, this is like wild. Like then, then I'm not, they're not playing this on MTV. Like this is like frigging heavy, crazy, like creepy shit. Mm-hmm. And then I got into the album and then I remember going like backwards and like getting into, you know, hearing crazy train and blizzard. And that's when my parents. I, it's so funny. I grew up Catholic house with my parents. Like, you're not listening to Aussie. You are not buying Aussie records, uh, <laughs> now, which, which, which was friggin', which was hilarious. But, um, yeah, I've, I've never admittedly been a big Aussie fan except for Blizzard and Diary. Some of his later mm. stuff I like, but these two albums I love and I'm jacked yeah. to talk about it. Yeah, Zach, what about you? How did you, uh, how did you get into this, this album or, you know, Aussie solo and everything? Well, I would, I, I was not in, I think the first record, uh, Blizzard came out in 80 and yep. I got it. I was a huge Van Halen fan. I was like 13 in 1980. Still so Van Halen was my world at the time, but I didn't know that Ozzy was in Black Sabbath. I didn't, I came to Black Sabbath a lot later. Right. There was yep. just this album that came out with Crazy Train and I don't know, we're, we're on the radio all the time in Southern California where I was living then. And it was like the best thing I ever heard. Yeah. And there was a rumor that it was actually a van because it was before Fair Warning came out. Yep. Fair Warning was either just about to come out or, yeah, it was, and then Crazy Train came out and some kid at my school said, oh, Van Halen has a song that Eddie sings. It was complete <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> and I thought that was it because it yeah. didn't sound like Dave, but the guitar playing was so amazing that I thought, well, no one plays guitar like that. So this has to be that Van Halen song that Eddie's singing. Yeah. And I kn- I didn't know who Ozzy Osbourne was. I just, you know, the first Sabbath album I ever heard was Heaven and Hell, which came out okay. the same year. Yeah, right, really? right. And yeah. then someone told me, you know, Ozzy used to be in Black Sabbath. I was like, oh, shit. And then I went back and, and discovered the whole catalog. I just, I missed the boat. So, yeah. But then I got it. Yeah, that was massive Sabbath fan. Um, but I listened to Blizzard. I mean, Every kid that was learning how to play guitar at the time listened to Blizzard of Oz repeatedly, just obsessed over it over and over again. They came to town. All my friends went to see them. I didn't because I'm an asshole. I just had some other, you know, uh, I'll I'll go see them next year. Yeah, Culture Club was in town, of course. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Come on. Come on, man. (laughs) Yeah, give me a break. Fucking. So, uh, and then uh, Diary came out right after that, and it was even better than Blizzard. Ooh. And it was just like, you know, well, hang on. It was, it was, we'll not get into that. We'll get into that. <laughs> we'll get into that. It was the next, it was the next level. It was the next step. Yeah. It wasn't like an improvement. It was just like this band's even tighter now after this, after a few tours. The songs were, if possible, even more involved. Like Dire, the song Dire of a Bad Man yeah. is just, mm. it's just so advanced, the, the songwriting and the soloing and all that shit. So it was like, it was just building, it was growing, like the, mm. you know, and, I got really excited about that and then obsessed over diary. And then they came to town again. I stupidly didn't go. Cause I had to watch fucking Laverne and Shirley or some dopey <laughs> shit like that. We had at least Whatever Lenny and Squiggy. <laughs> Dude, fucking welcome back. Cars on. I can't go see Ozzy. Exactly. And right. then, and then uh, we, I, I went on a field trip at my school and we came back. And the second I walked in the house, my phone rang and it was my friend going, Randy Rose died. Oh, and then I was like, Oh, yeah, all my oh. friends went to go see them, and I stupidly stayed home. So, oh, lesson learned. Oof. Wow. Yikes. Wow. Yeah. So, as I've always talked about on the show, uh, like, Tom has an older sister. I have an older brother, but I also had this older crazy cousin named Mike. Mm-hmm. He was the one that was like, the oh, my God, cousin Mike. He had... Uh, the spirit of 76 on his wall. He had Aussie photos yes. on his wall. He would, <laughs> yep. you know, do the things on his notebook, Black Sabbath, and I like do yeah, the yeah. cross with Black Sabbath. And I do it too. And I'd be like, what the fuck is it? I've never even heard Black Sabbath ever. But I would yep. do and then learn how to do the Van Halen thing and the kiss. Yep. Look. He was oh, yeah. got me into this and he got me into Aussie. I fucking loved Cra- uh, Crazy Train. And because I remember the big thing was back then. Crazy Train. It's like the Halloween movie. That music. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. And then I just remembered 
the second album came out and this crazy ass cover and yeah. he was just kiss but scarier but cool yeah. still it wasn't like it wasn't like your first time hearing thrash like oh what the fuck it was right. like there was something about the music and that's you learn later on that's just randy's classical training that kind of mm-hmm. gets you draws you in even though there's a heavy part to it and i i love this shit and i always grew up on uh, loving ozzy as a solo i never got into black sabbath never i know still the hits. to this day to this day i have greatest hits i know the hits and that's it and i'll always go back and i'm a huge rainbow fan and I mm-hmm. never got into like the Dio Black Sabbath. I, I'm always they, they they laugh at me. I'm like Rainbow Dio's number three on that totem pole. Oh, it's, it's yeah. first it's Grand Bonnets, Down to Earth, then it's JLT, ah, then it's Dio. As I get into yeah. it now more, I'm like holy fuck, Stargazer yeah. and shit. I'm like this yep. is just other level shit. But regardless, I fucking loved it. The only one thing I want to add onto your story. Is I remember people because there's no internet. Yeah. It was Ozzy that died in a plane crash that was first get oh, all thrown wow. around. People were yeah. saying, Oh, I heard Ozzy, Ozzy my cousin, and I'm heard Ozzy Osbourne died in a plane crash. Yeah. Now, to me, I I'm still, what is this, 83? Yeah, we're oh, no, 80, 82? 80, 80, 81, I'm like, 82. 82. I'm like eight or nine. 82 years old. he died. I yep. March 82. Yeah. Yep. I, yeah. No, actually, you want to know the scary part? Tomorrow's oh. the anniversary. March oh 19th. my god! Oh, March nineteenth. Mar- March nineteenth. Yeah. So, wow. I need, I have no concept when he says no. His guitar players. What's that? Yeah. Like, I'm not a musician. Right. I knew nothing about it. Like, oh, so Ozzy's yeah. alive. Now yeah. I look back. I'm like, what the fuck? No, you know, we lost this genius. And um, that's my first intake of the album. The next thing we always go through is this fucking cover. Tom, want to lead us off? Oh, boy. I mean, we talked at length about the amazing Blizzard cover, and this right here, I mean, this right here, especially if you're our age, I mean, we're a little bit younger than Zach, but this comes out, we're about eight years old. Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm, just discovering, like, horror movies yeah, and Halloween. The, o- and the Omen the- and all those yeah. devil shit things. I, 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 this <laughs> is just, from the colors of the wording, to the fonts <clears throat> of Diary of a Madman, his face, his white makeup, the blood, the ripped clothes, the creepy little kid in the corner who's his son. Yeah. Yeah. Is just the whole, the, the dead bird on the table, the upside down cross, the melted candle, just fucking everything is absolutely beyond perfection. And then you flip the cover over and I never even connected the dots. It's like that's regular. Human Aussie up against the wall, and then the guy on the cover and like the dead body on the back is like the demon, like Aussie, like ripped out of the white outfit, like he's all bloodied and bruised and battered, and mm-hmm. it's just it, it it's just so perfect. And I you and they know how perfect it is because even on the back, there's credits to the cover, like in a movie. It says like yeah. who did who did the set who did the makeup who did, like you don't see that that often for a cover like this so to have a back cover to to be just as kick ass as the front cover is just beyond sick Zach what I did have you think this oh. on the duplex do you guys have this in the on the vinyl and shit no the only thing so no. I have the vinyl the only thing I have is the classic old photo of the band that didn't even perform on the album. <laughs> Right, which, yeah. which has which has Tommy Aldridge and Rudy Sarzo on the on the picture and then the lyrics, but no, I don't have that Zeus. Okay, but but Zach, when you saw this cover, you're again you're a little bit older. Was it like what the fuck? I have to listen to this music. I, honestly, man, that cover scared me. Yeah, I, I was def I was definitely scared by. It. I think I think in many ways, even with all the all the um, thrash metal and all the fucking black metal and whatever else is coming out. I have not seen a cover that is that scary. Yeah, I, I don't, or, or or I don't think it's have ever been topped. To be honest, because first off, the first thing you see is crazy Ozzy with the wounds, and he doesn't look like himself. It's not. It doesn't look like a makeup job. It looks something's wrong with this cover. You know, something's wrong the, with the, him. The, yeah, and, the, like the, the way the way that they did like that white pale makeup with the blood and his face and then if you look his yeah. the way his fingers are like he's conducting like an orchestra yeah. 
You know, like like it's just it's, and he's looking right at you. That, yes. that like the eyes are looking right at you and burning through you. And it was yes. like a, you know when I got it, it was vinyl. So it was just like I pulled it out and I was like, oh my god, you know, it was just yep. terrifying. Yep. Um, yep. I still think it's really scary and creepy and all the letter, all this like really kind of go- occult writing that's all over it. That was like, what does this mean? It yep. was really like the first cover where I could go, oh, okay, maybe, maybe Ozzy Osbourne is satanic. Uh, maybe I don't, you know, because there's all these like fucking different writings and he looks crazy and yeah. Yeah. It's, so it's it, was, per- it was scary. Yeah. It's perfect. Zeus. It's a perfect cover. Yeah. 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 So for me, I, I just, I found like he, Ozzy, especially with, <laughs> even if you listen to, the music on Blizzard of Oz and this, when you listen to Diary of a Madman, Revelation, Mother Earth, that classical stuff. And there's like that old Gothic Victorian era, universal movies, castles in London and Jack the Ripper times, like that crazy, like Gothic fucking imagery. It's perfectly done. And even inside Mm -hmm. you hear those type of organ music that plays and you, like I said, Die of a Madman, that beginning and other music that he did on Blizzard of Oz, it's perfect. It works. The imagery works. You might look at it as like, ah, he's got kind of like ultimate sin here, Ozzy here, a little bit <laughs> goofy mm-hmm. and stuff, but he plays the role perfectly. Well, and you think know? about it. Diary yeah, of a Madman, D- Diary of a Madman, Zeus, to kind of piggyback what you said, that was a, a Vincent Price movie from the sixties, Diary of a Madman. Right. That so you know, it yeah. makes like, sense. That right, whole right. like the Edgar Allan Poe, the fucking uh I don't yeah. know the hammer the, horror, like all that kind of yeah, shit. Exactly. Like, that yeah. universal like Frankenstein shit and yep. stuff, the creature and the monster. And then he continues that later on with Bark yeah. at the Moon and stuff. Yeah. But um yeah. It's also I like I, I got it the, the, the one thing I wanted to point out because I was like listening to the radio and I was like 12 and 13, like skateboarding and shit. There was nothing that, that these two records sounded a lot scarier and a lot um, muddy, not muddier, but like there was, there was a a, a real darkness to the records. Yes. The way the production was, you know, like back then on the radio, things like Jefferson Starship and, 38 special and things that were bright and, and journey and kind of like great journey. And it was all very bright and catered to the radio and it was very sunny and sunshiny. This was like gloomy. And even though the songs are really like melodic and things like that, the classical chord progressions and just Randy's tone was so different back then. It wasn't a bright guitar tone. It was, it was very dark and kind of, you know, muddy but 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 uh, i don't know how to describe it it was aggressive it, it was it wasn't like yeah. you said it wasn't it wasn't like listen to eddie van halen it was like when you heard right. when, when you heard randy like crunch it like it yeah. had like a, it had like an impact you know yeah it was very different yeah i it picture, wasn't like, like rock and roll back then it was like demonic yes you know? yeah, exactly. yeah yeah exactly so i think of like as soon as the chords start coming in on dire of a madman yeah and then you compare that mm-hmm. to what the guitar is on beautiful girls Right. Like yeah, that, exactly. Like 100%. That happy, that's exactly, yeah. You know, feet in the sand and, hey, Diamond Davis, that's an out yeah, yeah. yeah. And this guy over here is like fucking got a, he's got a crazy person in a castle. Yeah. You know, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. An upside but, down cross. And yeah, like, you know, yeah. and fucking, but, it's, it was scary. But one thing <laughs> I, I'd like to say though is he didn't, like for me, Ozzy never got into that Dungeons and Dragons kind of fucking deal shit. No, no. There was a no. clear difference, and you know what I mean. That whole sabotage, fucking like Hall of a Mountain King, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. like fantasy world, yep. fucking dwarfs and elves and shit. No, this yeah, seems yeah. like oh shit, we got a crazy person, we got a satanic demon guy. Like, yeah, this is a little yeah. bit more heavy. Yeah, so it's let me very get into- heavy. Let me get into a couple of the, the, the info here on Dire of a Madman. So it's funny because, I you know, Wikipedia just has October 1981. They don't even have a fucking date on this. Yeah. So wow. I, I don't know when it came out, but uh, it went to number 16 on U.S. Billboard, eventually three times platinum. I'm sure it's probably gone more than that, but they haven't uh, checked on that again because most artists don't do that stuff anymore. It's produced by Max Norman again who did the first one, who was actually the engineer, and they just said, fuck it, why don't you just produce? Yep. Ozzy, Randy, and Bob Daisley got uh, producer credits. Yep. So it's cool. the last, yeah, last to feature Randy Rhodes and Lee Kerslack. By the way, did anybody, anybody see that documentary on him? That's awesome. 
I've seen the beginning of it. it. I have seen the beginning of it. It's fucking it's awesome. It's really sad. It's really sad. The poor guy at the end, all he wanted was to get like uh, the gold record because it costs yeah. a lot of money to get these for, for playing on uh, for Blizzard and Diary. At the end, uh, Ozzy, I bet you it was Ozzy, and Sharon sent it to him. It was a nice, happy ending. He was like dying and stuff and he was going around and all these people were just talking about how great of a drummer he is. And then actually a singer too, but yep. Anyways, yep. Uh, this is the last two wow. they play. Although Rudy and Tommy Aldrich are credited on this album, and Tommy says uh, I've seen interviews where he's been like, "I never said I played on this." Anybody that listens to that can tell that's not me playing. And I've always yeah. credited Lee. He's brilliant on that, and you know, God bless him. Yep. Even our good friend and the guy who's been on our show probably the most, Don Airy. Right? Uh, yeah. Don Erie's credit on this, but it was actually a guy named Johnny Cook who played the, the keys on this. Uh, mm. There is a, uh, the infamous Sharon move where oh, they, uh, you know, uh, as, as, as the story goes, Bob Daisley wrote all the music, uh, wrote all the lyrics. Randy did all the music. They combined and Lee Kurzlag actually did a lot of the demos and sang, and he had some hands in the mm. reduction and, Ozzy may have done some melodies or something, but along the way, they weren't really credited with that. And they finally said, Hey, can you pay us for this? Yep. And then, uh, apparently Sharon got pissed and then redid those albums and had, uh, Metallica's bassist, right? Robert. Well, Trujillo. he was at, yep. at the, well, at the time he was playing with Ozzy. Robert yeah, Trujillo, and Mike yeah. Gordon came in in yep. 2002 and, mm-hmm. uh, did all the, did all the music over and I could totally see it like, Fuck you! You're not getting shit. Watch what I'm gonna do. And I had this, and I had no idea that I wasn't listening to the original shit. I've had yeah, these because oh at God. the time they didn't put the sticker on the front telling you that you yeah. were listening to a different so album. I didn't realize I got wow. pissed, so yep. I had to go buy the newer deluxe version. I got yep. this one, which has the real uh, musicians playing on it. But the that funny is thing is, the, the, the funny thing is, shit back move. No yeah, and the funny wow. thing is, you listen, you listen to Ozzy, he just fucking totally rats out Sharon. He's like, oh, no, he no. Has, I think he has nothing to do with it. No. I think he's yeah. clueless what's yeah. going on. Oh, what guys, everybody upset. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, fucking, those guys got four. But that, that was a fucked up move. Can you imagine, Zach, an album that you're on then being re recorded like 40, 30 years later? 20 years later because because and then no not no one telling paid. yeah no one telling you you know it's it's oh terrible i mean now that it's been done I, yeah i can't imagine it it's real tragic because like you know if you grew up with a record like like uh zeppelin 2 and then all of a right. sudden they replaced the drums and the bass because because john paul jones and john bonham wanted to get paid their due Right. And you have two other guys <laughs> playing it and you go buy zeppelin 2 to show your friend what it's yeah. like and it's just not the record that you and you can't get the other record anymore. That's the sad part. It wasn't like, here's an option. If right. you want this other rhythm section, this is the only version you're ever going to hear ever again. That's kind of what that was like until she yeah. released it. Until they released yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Terrible. It's, Terrible. It's fucking, it's, she is, uh, <laughs> I'll give her credit. One of the greatest business persons in yeah. music history, but good really fucking is. Lord. Just, I mean, if she ain't on, on your side, side, you know, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, I said the same thing. Our, yeah. uh, I think our friend, uh, Mr. Eddie Trunk yeah. is on that shit list too. He's got Paul and Jeans and Sharon's and I think he gets <laughs> the, the shaft from those guys. Poor Eddie. But uh, I don't blame them though. These guys, they deserve the credit that they got because they were a fantastic yeah. fucking band. And yeah. we already talked about it when we did Blizzard of Oz. The band was yeah. supposed to be Blizzard of Oz. That was yeah. a band. And Correct. Then she came in and was like, no, 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 this is his solo album. Yep. And, uh, and they got kind of screwed out of this. And I could, you know, like they were saying, as we had Rudy Sarzo on not too long on, like Randy was on his way out as soon as the yeah. tour was out. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. He was on his way out. Yep. And, uh, unfortunately, a little too late because, uh, it would have changed all of history if he got to see him do some other stuff besides oh. Ozzy. Oh, oh, God. Yeah. It would have yeah. been amazing. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yep. All right. Well, guys, what we're going to do first is we're going to get into the tracks. And let's start with this monster, track number one.
All right, so we start off with Over the Mountain, one of the most insane drum intros that you will ever hear. The song yes. is a staple of Ozzy. It's a staple of this album. The, the the song just drives and drives and drives. It's got, I'll say it right now, it's got one of the most insane solos that Randy has ever done, and it's so good, it's not even the best one on the album, quote, for me. This song is is just so, even 40-plus years later, it's it's heavier than half the shit that's on the radio right now. It's fucking insane. And Zach, I don't know if you've seen this video. If you haven't, when we're done recording, you're going to have to check it out. There's a video on YouTube yeah. of Tommy Aldridge playing the drums to this song with the music, with the rest of the song. Oh, wait, wait. Fuck. You got you to gotta preface it by saying a, like, 72-year-old. Oh, yeah. Tommy oh, Aldridge. yeah. 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 It, it I is, saw it. it Oh my God. It is incredible. It's incredible. incredible. It's incredible. But yeah. over the, over the mountain is one of the most, I mean, you thought, I don't know, kicked off Blizzard of Oz badass over the mountain, yeah. kicking this off. Just insane. Zach, what do, you, what do you think about this one? I mean, it's the perfect way to start that record, you know, because it, yeah. it just, it, it, you were wor- not worried, but you, if you were like me, where you were obsessed with Blizzard of Oz, you're waiting for this one to come out. You memorize that whole record. It was like Van Halen one. Then Van Halen two comes out and you think like, how's this one going to start? The other one started running with the devil. What's going to be, how's this, you know? So the second that kicked in, you're like, okay, we're good. Yeah. Like this record's going to be amazing. You know, like this is, (laughs) it was so, it was even heavier. You know, it was, yeah, it was just, it was a 10, you know, just that intro, that drum intro still is, you know, one of the best drum intros ever. His soul is amazing. The first few notes he quotes, the song Black Sabbath, which I didn't realize until. Oh, I didn't even pick up on that. Recently, okay. it's a, there's a tritone going on. There's a, ah, uh, 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 which is the song Black Sabbath. Oh, that's how shit. he starts yeah, that yeah. song. I don't know if he did that. Yeah. I don't know if that's I, on purpose, but yeah. But yeah, no, it's, it was just, you know, you were like, okay, I'm good hands. This record's going to be amazing. Yeah. True. Awesome. Yeah. So Over the Mountain was written by all four, get credit now Ozzy, Randy, Bob, and Lee. It made it to number 38 on the what was then Billboard Top Tracks, which I think is now Mainstream Rock char, uh, uh, right. Mainstream Rock Tracks. Uh, there's that legendary drum open, as you mentioned. Lee Kurzlak is just fucking killing it. And then that driving guitar. It's like that fucking, I love it. It sounds like a train. Just amazing. And even the drums during the pre-chorus, and Aldridge says it, and he, when he does that breakdown, and he's just like you, like if you didn't think about it all these years, I never thought about it. And then when I watch him doing it, he's like going fucking nuts. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit! I didn't realize how intricate the oh, drums yeah. are on this. Yeah, and um, it's just awesome. And then uh, there's that cool guitar effect that comes in. Uh, I think on the second verse around 124, he adds yep. like that little tone thing that he does there. Um, the, that 252 mark. Of his solo to 304, mm-hmm. in between there, that whole guitar solo, like what? now that we've heard it a million times and we've heard all the craziness of guitars since then, not how original that was back then, huh? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like I'm, I'm, he's doing that. It's not like Ozzy's like, no, 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 play something like he's just here. Here's what I got. Yep, mm-hmm. insane. How talented this man is. It, it is. Yeah. And the funny, because Lee says that this song and the next song were some of his ideas. They were Bob's words, and I did all the demos, and he did all the vocals on the demos. And then Ozzy came in and obviously did the rest. But I I just, it's one of those things, you're right. This isn't fucking fanfare from Music of the Elder. You put it (laughs) on, you're like... Dude, what the fuck am I listening to? Right? right, 80, right. 81, 82, right? Yeah. That's yeah. what Ozzy's got going on. That's what Kiss is competing with. Yeah. That's that, true. It's, sorry, it's, I got I mean, I gotta go there, but I'm just No, like, go there. It's it's reality. Oh, it's 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 pretty it's pretty sad what, what Kiss could have been doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing stuff. Yep. All right, let's go to the next one. So we follow up with, uh, again, the first song I ever heard from Ozzy, and that is Flying High Again. Now, great song, classic song, legendary song, but way different than, not only is it way different for me than Over the Mile, it's, it's way different than anything that was on Blizzard. It's got like, it's almost got like a funky groove to it. 
like the mm-hmm. the way that the, what what the drums are doing, especially with the bass is doing, and and Aussie with the with the with that little vocal and it. I mean, it's a very melodic. So there's a reason why the song became huge and why it became a hit and it was a single. It's definitely not as heavy as anything until you get to what arguably might be Randy's best solo short of Crazy Train. This solo is just the definition of a fucking face melter when you hear this. And and sometimes I listen to the song just so I can hear the solo again. <laughs> and I just think it's I, we keep going back to Blizzard because to me, their sister albums. I think everybody would agree with that. But you get Blizzard with I don't know in Crazy Train. And then you got this with over the mountain flying high again it's like which one is better i guess it depends on your mood but flying high again just friggin' another classic zach yeah i agree I, I, it does have a funkiness to it which i thought was super cool because you know there was some metal bands or hard rock bands at the time that were experimenting with those kind of rhythms and i always thought that was super appealing because it you know it's just it's 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 a cool like you said it's unexpected yeah, to kind of to kind of groove to it's kind of a predecessor to groove metal, I guess. Yeah, in a weird way. There you go. Yeah, but it, but it was also super poppy. You know, that was the thing. Like like the Blizzard of Oz, the original Blizzard of Oz had real great hooks. Mm-hmm. You know, and and the chorus is really hooky and 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 poppy, and I, it kind of for me follows the same framework as the first record because I don't know. Sort of introduces the record. It's heavy. It's fast. It's got the same kind of picking as Over the Mountain. Ding, 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 yep. It's got tremolo picking. And then the next song is the hit single. So on this record, same thing. Yeah. Fast tremolo picking song, heavy. And then the next song is the hit single with the poppy chorus that sticks in your head. Yeah. And Great then the point. third song, the third song is a ballad. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, I think it's, it's, uh, intentional. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Metallica did that on their early albums. Remember, they would open yeah. up, they would open up with like an absolute ripping thrash. Then, they, yep. you know, and they would end with an instrumental or whatever. So a lot of these bands, uh, yeah. they, fall, they fall that template. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, I, I, it was one of those songs that's instantly likable. The first, oh, yeah. First time I heard it and I was going, oh, now I was like, yeah. <laughs> love this song. Yep. Great song. Yep. Yep. I'm totally, I don't even need to hear the chorus yet. And I'm just totally in. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, flying high again, again by all four are given the credit on this. This went up to number two on mainstream rock. I am a hundred percent with you, fo- following the formula of uh, Blizzard of Oz, over the mountain. Uh, I don't know, same killer, fucking great way to start off, and then the mm. like the fun, like crazy train. But it, after you get out uh, that opening scary kind of guitar. If you get into the verses, it's a ding, ding, ding. it's like a it's a pop it's a pop song. song. It's a yeah. pop song, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. can you can do like the Carlton dance to Crazy Train, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it works. <laughs> but Flying High Again is like that. It's fun. It's lighthearted, yeah. and it's something that one's about a Crazy Train that's cool to kids. This one's about getting high. Now, Ozzy yeah. says, you know, we we all think it's about smoking pot or doing something like that, but Ozzy says it's about him. Yep. succeeding after coming back after being fired from black sabbath so yeah. i'm back mm. up on top again it's like the old toby keith how do you like me now right you right mm-hmm. me off my record label i'll buy mm. my record back be, do this and now i'm the biggest fucking artist in country fuck off yeah it's mm-hmm. like ozzy saying that to his critics it's about I- drugs yeah, I was going to say it's about drugs. <laughs> Literally, I was about to spit that out. You buy that bullshit? <laughs> yeah, no, because Bob Daisley wrote it, and, and right. I think Bob Daisley wrote his songs based upon the imagery that Ozzy is putting out there, and he's yep. brilliant yeah. about it. Uh, yeah. Yep. I think it's kind of like Van Halen. This is like the closest to Van Halen, Eddie. I feel like his guitar playing is. Yeah, yeah it's okay. that kind of like loose. It's not as clean until we'll get to the solo. Uh, the drums right after the chorus of flying high again are fucking killer again. Oh, so good. Yeah. The guitar between the verses and just the stops and starts that he does in that and gets back into it. Uh, and I, I always love this. And I, when I was a young kid and I still wait for that part in the song where he says, am I just a crazy guy? You bet. I love just, that. I fucking love it. It's just one of those cheesy things yep. that I fucking loved him doing that. There's a great bass line during the chorus, too. You can hear it. Oh, yeah. It's really prominent. The The solo is just the classic yeah. guitar oh it's yeah. nice and smooth and just those notes are so fucking clean that he's hitting they're beautiful yeah. it, like 
I always think of like Randy when he plays the guitar and he gets really into it. Those quick solos, it's like almost like a violin. It's like an orchestra. It is yep. so yeah. fucking clean. Yeah. And 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 you can tell he's got that classical background training in it, and it's amazing. And I and I also picked up another little kiss bit here. Daddy thinks I'm crazy. He don't understand. I'm like, I think Bob Daly is trying. Daisley is trying to rip off Flaming Youth. Oh yeah, it could be. <laughs> Could be <laughs> those cheesy lyrics from Flaming Youth. Yeah, uh, my parents yeah. think I'm crazy. I'm lazy, yeah, yeah, and, and stupid, and I'm lazy. Yeah, yeah, and if they yeah. only knew. Yep, yeah. that's true. Um, yep. yeah. There's one other sad part about this song. Do you ever pick up the irony of flying high again? Yeah, I know. And Randy's sucks. death. And Randy oh, died. Oh no, a, I never even thought about that. Yeah, Randy died in a plane crash because Awful. the fucking yeah. shithead bus guy thought it was all fucked up on cocaine. And he was flying yeah. high. Yep. Yeah, that's the irony of that in that song. And it didn't occur to me until I started really playing this over again in prep that I'm like, holy fuck. Yep. Wow. Because yeah. I was trying to explain the song to my kid. And I'm like, yeah, this is the guy I was telling you about died in a plane crash because the guy was high. Mm. Like, yep. fuck. One other quick note. So I, I wrote this down because I'm trying to get a good bootleg and I'm looking for. I can get that bootleg of diary songs that Randy did prior to dying, not Ozzy post Randy. Yeah. But I looked it up. I went on setlist.com over the mountain played 13 times in 81, 104 in 1982. Now, I don't know who played them all flying high 93 times in 81, 101 in 82. Then you get to, you can't kill rock and roll once in 81 once in 82 believer 94 times in 81 101 times in 82 yes. nothing for little dolls nothing for sato nothing for tonight and one time april 20th 1982 post randy diary of a madman wow so oh so he never played diary of a madman live with randy wow no no, no. holy shit well, if, that's, if, if 1982 is 100 times, he died in March of 1982. Yep. So that's obviously post him. Yeah, yeah. Mo- most yep. of those are post. So yeah. really, yeah. if you get it, like when I've looked at live albums, good stuff, I can find Over the Mountain Flying High Again and Believe Her. Uh, I haven't seen anything with You Can't Kill Rock and Roll. And, you know, the, those other songs on side too, there's none. It's too bad. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Anyways, let's go to track three. So track three, we kind of get the first, like, uh, I guess you'd call it maybe half of a ballad. You can't kill rock and roll. The radio loves this song. Uh, Zeus, this won't be, you brought it up once. It won't be the last time we talk about the kind of classical orchestral gothic sounds that Randy brings to the band. The, the way this starts off, the, the sound, the clean tone of those acoustic sounds. And then after the after the band kicks in and does that it does like the full verse, you know, then the then the, or the full chorus and everything, then the band kind of takes over for the rest of the song. Um, there is the way Randy affects these songs. I mean, you can't kill a rock and roll. It's a great song. It's melodic. It's it's got a couple different variations what what it does throughout the song. But the what Randy does to elevate a song to me is just what separates these two albums from just anything else in the rock and metal genre. Um, I actually think Ozzy's voice sounds really good on this song. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a huge <laughs> fan of his vocals, but I think he vocally, I think he sounds good. Now I, I always Zach, I always tease Zeus and our guests on the show when people complain about long songs. Cause I'm like, well, where do you have to go? Who cares <laughs> yeah. how long the song is? Right. That 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 being said, this song's long, <laughs> and it How feels long is it? it's six, seven minutes long. It's six fifty eight. Six fifty eight. Is it, it really? It, yeah, yeah. Oh wow! It, it was so long that I I realized this is long, and I put the time down. I didn't do that for anything else, but I realized someone's going to bring up how long this is. Yeah, I had to just because there are points in the song where I'm like, this feels long, but it, it's a great song. It's one of Ozzy's best. Yeah, I agree. It's a great ballad. His voice, yeah, sounds incredible on it. I think the the, the songwriting is just, I mean, the thing is, is you know, Daisley and Kerslake and Randy came up with great songs. The foundations of all the songs are, are like yep. so, so hooky and so catchy. It's just, it could be, 
I mean, to me, that song particularly could be like a cheap trick song if you kind of reinvent yeah. it. Sure. And just take a lot of the classical work out of it because the the chorus is the chorus is incredibly all his choruses are really catchy on both of these records particularly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's and then you throw Randy on top with this virtuosic, you know, guitar playing and you, yeah, it's it's a it's a fucking shoe in. Yeah. Uh, I love that. So I didn't realize it was that long though. I, I, yep. it just kind of <laughs> flows by to me, but maybe because I'm just so into it. I'm like you, you have to fucking numbers. <laughs> um, no, no. <laughs> I'm a fan. Unlike you, a you, know, you got to pick it up. Oh, here we go. Sound like it to me. Tom. Sorry. Here it comes. Here it comes. So, yeah, this is know, one that listen actually... to your Celine Dion records. If you need, Oh, to how did you know Zach? That's what we're going to do uh, next month. Can you come back? You can't hide. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Good. <laughs> This one doesn't have uh, Lee as the songwriter. It just has the three, Ozzy, Randy, and Bob. Uh, this is probably left over from the first record. That's probably why. Could be. I would imagine. Oh, yeah. So, I, I mean, I just have the same thing. It's a nice acoustic. It's the goodbye to romance song. Uh, yeah. I like to pick up when it gets into the electric guitar. And I put on this, wow, this is when you can say, I know he gets shit, but Ozzy's got a great voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the, the doubling of the vocals on the second verse coming in with that eerie little yeah. sound effect is pretty mm-hmm. cool. Uh, I don't know. This the lyrics are are deep. He's talking about something about being a a pawn, losing to a king of a thousand knights. Like this, no fucking way, Ozzy wrote any of this. <laughs> no, <laughs> of course no. not. Kidding me? Not. Yeah, it's got. But to be soul. fair, yeah. To be fair, though, uh, to be fair, I mean, Ozzy was in a real bad. He was in a real bad place back then. Yeah, and he was in a bad place in Bark at the Moon. He was in a bad place at Ultimate Sin. He was in a bad place in Blizzard of Oz. And he I mean, just had like Bob the... Daisley and Jakey Lee later on to help him out. Exactly. I, yeah. I, I say no more. But, you know, he. I, I think that he's – we all know that he's incredibly gifted and talented, and he's a real musical soul, and mm-hmm. he doesn't He doesn't have uh, the kind of chops or something that, like, Halford or Dio or somebody like that would have. Doesn't need to. But – yeah. Exactly. He doesn't. He is his own person. Nobody sounds like him. Nobody writes like him. Nobody phrases like him. He's just he's a hundred percent original singer. And he, uh, to me, he has such an appealing sound to his voice. Mm. Yeah. The second you hear his voice, the first time I heard him was Crazy Train when it came out. And I didn't know who Ozzy Osbourne was. I just thought, what a friendly sounding voice. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. it's like I wasn't impressed by, you know, Dave had this kind of like you know, bluesy kind of big band Cab Calloway kind of thing to his voice. And, and he could do all these crazy screams and he had personality, like he's fucking, you know, having three strippers at his house. And then Halford had the operatic thing and Dio had this real kind of growl and power to him. But Ozzy just has this friendliness to his voice. It's just so it's a melodic inviting. voice. Yeah. It's a very melodic voice. Melodic. The tone, his tone is like all, I think the pop punk people later on, you know, kind of copied that. Yes, I because you don't do a lot of high note vibrato singing in pop punk. Right. You try to have a really wonderful poppy voice, but pleasant sounding. You know. Yeah. God, and I think I, I yeah. think Ozzy was a tremendous influence on Green Day. I mean, I'm sure of it because I know Billy Joe was a huge Ozzy fan. But yeah, this this I didn't mean to go on a tangent, but no, go I, ahead. I think that I think that in the writing, I definitely think that Daisley and Kerslake and Randy came up with all the melodies. And Daisley, I'm sure, wrote all the words. But when Ozzy came in and started singing it, he added his own phrasing, his own yeah, flavor yeah, to it. Because yeah, yeah. the the melody line in this song sounds just like a melody line in the Zach Wild era and and mm-hmm. and the Jakey Lee era. And there's something about the way he phrases, and it can't always be those. You know, Randy was gone by that point, so there's something that he well, when Daisley he shows was up, the main theme throughout. And I think he even yeah. got into Zach stuff. So, look, look, I do, the I agree. band is fucking tremendous. And That's I, I mean, honestly, I could put those four together with these two albums as good as any fucking band in the hard rock genre. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. No good. doubt. I agree. Daisley, Daisley just knew what to do. He was like a me, Aussie's muse, just fucking. I can use you and do all this shit through you with this imagery and your personality and the way you sing. He's funny because Ozzy, you never like, okay, let's get a fucking super group together. We need this guy. We need this guy. Nobody's like, oh, let's get Ozzy to sing. Like, but he's got a great voice. He, uh, he reminds me of Stephen Piercy. 
I mm-hmm. fucking yeah. love him. But nobody's Me like, too. oh, let's get Stephen Piercy to sing the song. But his distinctive voice, he's not going Rob Halford. He's not Bon right. Jovi. But he's got that unique voice. You know when you hear Stephen Piercy. It and works it for what Rat does. It works it perfectly works for, for yeah. Rat. Yep. And yep. I think Ozzy works for this perfectly. Although yep. as he got older, I, Tom knows the joke that I make all the time. He fucking sang whiny. When the time he came up to No More Tears... Terrible. Yeah. It just no. sounds like he's whining throughout all his fucking songs. I actually but, think that's that. I actually think that's that song's fault, not necessarily oh, yeah. Ozzy's fault. But a guitar on that fuck, it's heavy. Oh, yeah. It's just, of course it it's is. just the yeah. way it comes across. It sounds yeah. so whiny. Yeah. But he yeah. is just, just these two albums, musically, the band off the charts. And I want to just end with the solo's great and the outro's great on this. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, All right, 100%. let's end with the last track on side one. Fuck yeah. All right, Believer. Holy fuck, dude, this song <laughs> is just... I mean, this... Okay, I, I have so many things to say about this because I gush every time I hear this song. <laughs> that opening... Now, Zach, you're a bass player. Yeah. The, oh, the, the bass, the creepy haunted house sounds <laughs> that the guitar is doing... And then yeah. when the whole band kicks in, yeah. when that when the proper horde comes in with Randy, I am yeah. like, this is fucking metal right here. This is yeah. melodic, hard, heavy fucking metal. I think it's rock. heavy. Yeah, and to yeah, me, definitely the, the begin that that whole intro before Ozzy starts to say that it's almost like this is Ozzy's like God of Thunder. Like the like the it, it, it I have it gives me it, it's like, it's like painting that picture like it's like a stomping dark gloomy menacing song it's like Ozzy's like theme mm-hmm. and and then once it once it kicks in with the vocals and even the little breakdown and everything it's like this mm-hmm. song is just it's 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 a spectacular song I mean his solo again Randy is just blowing people's brains out with this but man the, the, what a, what a killer killer track I, I wish this was a little well actually I wish it was a lot more popular than it is because it's a killer yeah I agree 100 uh, percent it yeah. was you know it's funny you said that because at the time when that that when this record came out, there was this whole new before the new wave of British heavy metal. There was this new wave of what would later be called heavy metal. But at yeah. the time, there was still no real name. I mean, they called you know they called uh, uh, Foghat heavy metal at one point. You know, there was it wasn't really as defined yet. And this record and British Steel by Judas Priest and I think I remember the second Michael Schenker group record came out right around the same time. Mm-hmm. This was a different style of music. It, it sounded more evil. It sounded mm-hmm. heavier. The guitar playing was way more virtuosic. Like Van Halen was, was fast. And, but there was still a lot of, I mean, as virtuosic as he was, it was still a lot of um, blues based rock and roll going. It was yep. rock and roll. Yep. You know, it was tits and ass and rock and roll and party music. And it was just the greatest party that you could ever imagine. Um, But this was getting into more orchestrated, heavier, evil music. It was really like, I mean, it's hard to think now because we have Slayer and that are just, you know, commonplace. But but back then, dude, this was like the most evil thing you heard on the radio by far, especially this song. And it's proof that to me slow and menacing and stomping is scarier than like raining blood by slayer 100 you know like 100%. this is although although rain, the best part raining about blood's raining awesome, blood, but, but but the best the most memorable part about raining blood the same thing with angel of death is the slow parts yeah true the opening riff the opening riff of raining blood could fit on this record yeah. it's that's the best part about that song and angel of death is which also could fit on this record. Yeah. Those, those kind of riffs didn't exist on the, certainly not on the radio. And I don't even think in, in you know, I mean, here and there, I guess, but not on the, on pop radio. Cause I remember these songs being played on the, on the radio with sticks and things like that. And you're just like, you know, it was like alarming that I was like, Oh my God, it's on the radio. Like, yeah, yeah, it was, it's it's way ahead of its time. Yeah. I was saying that when we did blizzard, that guitar breakdown had so many genres on 
Mother Earth Revelations. That oh, yeah. little mm-hmm. acoustic classical guitar, and then it gets into the riff, and then it gets into that last part, which is like to me, like the birth of thrash. Yeah. And then it just goes in, all the drums are going nuts, bells are going off, and he just ends it. I'm like, Yeah, what the fuck did you just listen to? <laughs> yeah. It is amazing. Yeah. This yeah. is exactly I couldn't think of it. I'm like, it's not cashmere. <clears throat> Something was like like this foreboding that's coming. Yeah. It's God yeah. of Thunder. That's yeah. what it sounds like. Yeah. It's like that yeah, it is. foreboding. Yeah. Like, dun, 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 yep. Where you can totally picture Gene on top of a fucking mountain. Yes. Like the yeah. hands up, blood everywhere, all fucking menacing yeah. and scaring the shit. Like an army's coming of people and there's going to be a fucking war. This is the yeah. same thing that menacing, haunting kind of streaks and like, what the fuck is going on here? Like this is the kind yeah. of music when you're young, you don't want to be in a castle alone in this music playing. You'd be scared out of your fucking mind. It's so I, I, I actually have Zeus. I think I share this with you, uh, Zach. I have a uh, it, it's it's a bootleg, but it's one of those mass produced, like available on Amazon type boot, bootlegs, and it's Aussie live in Montreal, 1981, with Randy, and wow. it's the Blizzard of Oz tour. But he starts, he plays a few. Um, Diary songs and Believer is one of them. Yeah, it's on this too. Mm-hmm. It's the live, yeah. it's the second live one. Yeah. Yeah. And it oh, sounds wow. fucking insane yeah. live. It's oh, it's so wild. Imagine. It's so crazy. It's yeah, awesome. Believer flying high again is on this. Yes. Um uh, I think that's it for I think he only plays the one that I have. I think it's only two diary songs because the album hadn't been out yeah. yet, so he's yeah. gonna introduce them. But yeah. So this was uh, there was an amazing thing. there was yeah. an EP that came out, like diary EP. That's very hard to find. If you find that fucking album, it's probably worth a ton of money. Yeah. You have it? I have it. I, no. I have it on pic- I have it on picture disc. No oh, shit. What is nice. it called? What is it called? Who wants to touch me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's what it's uh, called, but it- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who wants to touch Zach Ron. Um, I forgot what it's called. It has a picture of Ozzy on live on tour. Um, it has an unreleased song on it. If this is the one you guys are talking about called You Said It All, which later came out. But at the time, this was the only place where you could get You Said It All. It was an outtake from either Blizzard or Diary. But it has really? lie. It has. Oh, it's the Mr. Crowley EP. Maybe this isn't the one you're talking about. Yes, I think that's it. Mr. Crowley. Yeah, I have it on picture disc, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. There's some very like, uh, and he's got another one too that came out, I think, as well. Not Diary of a Madman that was kind of out there. Anyway, the the song is just fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you think there's a little bit of a um, running with the devil opening? Oh yeah, definitely. Oh definitely. definitely. Right. Yeah, good, whole, even good, the street yeah. and the noises yep. that they're making. Good call. Um, yep. The only other thing I would say there's a. Uh, uh, he has that like spooky. I know after the last. Uh, oh yeah, the vocal effect. Yeah, yeah. that he does yeah. in there. It's it's just a fucking heavy foreboding plotting song. The chorus it's, is crazy. It's evil, man. And yeah, the yeah. blistering guitar solo with uh, Lee Kurzweil is on the drum, and then that outro is fantastic. Just yeah. an incredible, incredible fucking song and way to end yep. the album. All right, the side, the yeah. side, yes, yeah, and to end the side, yes, we're not yeah. done yet. Uh, let's go to Ace Frehley's Dolls. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Little Dolls. <laughs> we are not doing that. That's very different than this song, but go ahead. <laughs> so Little Dolls, just like Over the Mountain, another killer drum intro, very tribal, you know, not not a, yeah. not, not the same as Over the Mountain. But then this is like a sister song to, to me, to Believer. It's another like stomping, yeah. plodding, heavy riff based song and yep. again i think aussie sounds great and, yeah and, and, and on this song and you see this a lot on i feel like it's more on diary than it is on blizzard the songs are like menacing and heavy and dark and just real just crazy sounding and then all of a sudden there's like he sprinkles in like this little like melodic like upbeat like happy it's almost like the sun came out for like 30 yeah. seconds of the song and he does it yeah, in this yeah. t- and he does it in this too and i think it i think it works this is a t- t- another freaking killer 
like deep track that just sounds awesome. It's, it's a I great, agree. it's a, it's a great song. Really well written, great chorus, really melodic, happy chorus. His voice yeah. sounds amazing on it. Yeah, again, a great, great, great drum part. Yeah, yeah, great drumming. Yeah. All right, little dolls. Uh, this uh, is back to the foursome again. All four. It's a nice drum opening into a heavy riff. There is like, um, I don't know, it's about a voodoo priest of some sort, fucking putting <laughs> yeah. like little things into dolls and stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that chorus yeah. is almost a Paul Stanley like chorus. Mm, very Actually, good. is all fucking hell. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. It is. Right? Nowhere to run. Yeah. Your fate is in his hands. Your time is oh, come. Yeah. You live to his command. I'm yep. warning you, the worst is yet to come. The killer who remains a Mr. Oh, it's fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. And, and then it goes back to like a dun dun dun. Yeah. Dun, but the, like, which is like these, I mean, really, Paul, that's these are all type things that are yeah, catching. That's why I fall in love with all those Paul Stanley choruses. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. The bass is fucking cool on the verses on oh this song. God. I don't know. You yeah. probably can tell me a little bit better on that. Um, and then there's me? a cool Randy. Uh, you know, I don't I'm not calling Tom the bass player. I'm not a bass player, Zach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would hope that's you, buddy. Uh, and there's a cool Randy outro as well. But yeah. I think this is just the solo, too, which goes right back into the drums again. Nice and heavy. Fucking great deep cut of Aussies. No, you, yeah. You're right. When, 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 it, when the song kind of circles back and he does that tribal beat again, yeah. I'm like, oh, he just fucking pulls you right back in. So good. Yeah. Just so musically, good. the lyrics, the vocals, the fucking drums, the bass. And then you've got the legendary guitar of Randy Rhodes. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I'm we're gushing over this. We don't usually gush this bad. We're usually like this song sucks. <laughs> Mm-mm. Yeah, right. but not, on this, not on this. Not on this. Not on this album. Yeah, no. no I'm not no, used this, to gushing. I don't, yeah, I'm not a no, gusher. No, we're we're used to <laughs> shitting on things here. But I shitting on stuff. Yeah, let's go. I'm curious to see where this one lands. The next song. Oh man. All right. So next we got tonight. So. Great bass line. I, I, again, the, the bass on this is so pronounced. Now, this is Ozzy doing his ballad. Now, to me, mm-hmm. this is Ozzy trying to be like Elton John. And, mm. and, and, and I love Elton John. And this yeah. is, this is to me a beautiful song. I, I think, I think it's, it's constructed beautifully, melodically. It's a really, really well done song that I don't think Ozzy should be singing and interesting but but because and and again and, and I know we were kind of we were kind of you know given kudos to him vocally but I just think this song it it's not bad I enjoy it because of the music but I feel like it's not the type of song that kind of plays to Ozzy's strengths it it it's not that it detracts from it but I just think to me it's not the rest of the album and i get it they they wanted it to be a ballad they wanted it to do it 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 pulls it it works but it's just not a standout for me i think i think randy has an incredibly tasteful solo on this because of the type of song that it is i think it works um i just think ozzy is kind of eh for me on this one not terrible because it's diary of a madman it's a, it's a song on the album that i love but it's just eh for me Zach. Well, this is my favorite song on the record. Ah, I love this. <laughs> but see, I love this. But this is what but this is what I love when we have people on it. When, when, but, somebody, but, gives, but, when somebody gives a hot take on polar opposites. I love it. But this that wasn't always the case. Uh, when when I when I was when this album was out and was big and we were all listening to it every day. Um, like you, I I I it was it's, it's a beautiful song. It is. Um, I always thought Ozzy's voice sounded great on it. Uh, okay. In the chorus, particularly, I think he really shines. It's kind of as I imagine him on stage. Yes, it is very Elton John. It is kind of like Tiny Dancer, but that chorus just really lifts up. But I, again, at the time I was younger, I wanted to hear a little heavier songs. I'm always a sucker for a great melody, so I always thought it was pretty. Yeah. But it was so you know it was kind of like a um, I don't know. Uh, kind of a place setter until we got to the next song. Mm-hmm. And then I was, this is a 
weird story, but I, I, I was in a band with a, a buddy of mine. Um, is he, you might as might know him. His name's Eric Dover. You know the guitar player Eric Dover. I've heard him. Yep. Okay. Who's he playing? Okay, Why Eric, do I know? Him? Yeah, Eric is Eric's a genius guitar player, singer, songwriter. Um, he was in the band called Jellyfish in the early nineties. Ah, and, that's okay. what I've heard. And then he, the spinoff band was Imperial Drag. He was Alice Cooper's guitar player. Anyway, he's a dear friend of mine, and we played in a lot of different bands together, just trading. I mean, Eric's just anything can come out of Eric at any time when you're playing. And one day we were at this gig playing and out of nowhere, he just started on guitar. He started playing that opening bass riff with the guitar part. So it was, it sounded like a classical thing. And it was like, what the hell is that? Yeah. And he just kept going. And then all of a sudden he was like, and I was like, I love this. What, what song is it? You know, I was like, I went back to my childhood. I'm like, is that Beatles? Like, what the? F-? And then I went, oh my God, tonight. And, yeah. And that was it, man. Something inside me just went, I love this song. I fucking, I didn't realize I loved this song until he played it that way. And I'm sure he doesn't remember doing this, but, um, and, I just thought somebody should remake this tune and maybe do it like an Elton John ballad, you know, yeah, with piano. And, and, and that's kind of my point, Zach. I love the song. Like I love, yeah. the cho- I love the chorus. I just yeah. don't think to me, it just, it it's good for Ozzy. He doesn't butcher it. He doesn't make it unlistenable, but right. you're right. If, if somebody were to re-record this, yeah, maybe, maybe I think that would give me what I want when I hear it. Cause it is a good song. Yeah. I, I agree with you. And I think, I mean, I think for this record, especially if you bought this record and you heard over the mountain and flying high again, this would probably be a little bit of a left turn, but there was, you know, the Sabbath song, there was a Sabbath song, another ballad, um, changes. And there was oh, a, yeah. an R and B art, it was an R and B artist. I forgot who it was who redid it. And he took that song that was a typical Sabbath and redid it as an R and B song. And it just popped, you know, right. it was like, Oh, that's what this song really is yeah and i think this song could have a complete i mean i think taylor swift could redo this song and make it something yeah. or sting you know it just has it's the song i guess it is the writing of this tune and the yeah. hook and the melody line of the verse mm-hmm. again. i mean you just it, it's it's it, it transcends whatever genre that it's supposed to do yeah on this record it seems a little out of place but as a song, I, I had no idea how much I liked the song till Eric played it that way. And then I went yeah. back and I went, this is my favorite song on the record now. Probably because I've heard all the other songs so many times. And, yeah, you that's know, a good point too. Yeah. This one see this one seems fresh now that I because I always yep. uh, just not paid any attention. So yeah. So you're wrong. I'm right. I win. <laughs> you lose. Okay, you got it. You're the guest. I'll let you win. <laughs> that's the name of that tone. All right. <laughs> so, so tonight it's written by all four again. So this is all I'll say, and just hear me out, Tom. You're not used to Ozzy doing these type of songs. You know Blizzard of Oz, you know Diary of a Madman, but he does this throughout his career. So you'll get Goodbye to Romance tonight. You'll get a So Tired, which I absolutely fucking love. I love love that song. (laughs) You're the first person I've ever met that loves that song. Love it. I think it's so it. beautiful. And have it you ever seen like the yellow, dude? Yeah, do you ever oh, see the Oh, that's video? not a good that's, thing. That's why he That's not it. a good thing, Zach. Uh, yellow is one of the punching rules, bags. Man. Uh, he's a punching bag for Tom. But <laughs> Sorry, uh, kid. have you ever seen the video for So Tired? Yes. I remember it's when it so came out. I... Fucked up. And so yeah, it's very fucking fucked just up. out there. <laughs> but anyway, so tired. Killer of giants. Thank God for yeah. the bomb. He I like does Killer these of of, I like Killer he of Judge. He does like these songs, song. and they work. I, yeah. I think they work. This is absolutely what you're saying, Zach. I'm with you. Yeah. This is the kind of shit, it's the biasy against an Aussie or um, a, a Kiss song. That if you took some like classical music, and you're at like yeah. some affair at the State House, and some classical music is being played, and it's tonight? People yep. are like, yeah, who, who's exactly. this composer? My goodness. Yeah. Uh, it's Bob Daisley. He played on one <laughs> yeah. Rainbow album. He yeah. played with Ozzy. Yeah. It was in Uriah Heep. He came up with yeah. this. And this guy named yeah. Randy Rhodes. But it's the yeah. same thing with Kiss stuff that you like. If you put it with the right person, didn't say what that fucking was. Yeah. You put uh, Turn On The Night to yeah. like Bon Jovi had them release it. Oh yeah! During that yeah. period, what will that what will happen? It, I, I, Ozzy takes this is a beautiful song. It yeah. works. Yeah, it really is. 
And the only thing, and so I always think, I, I think Ozzy can sing ballads. That's the one thing. There's a nice I, do too. I think, I think his voice sounds beautiful in this song, to yeah. be honest. I really I, do. I just think he, when he's singing this, when he's singing Goodbye to Romance, and he's singing uh, So Tired, and he's pleading for his love that he can't mm-hmm. have because she's promised to somebody else. I believe him. He sounds I like authentic. <laughs> he sounds passionate. But yeah. uh, the thing about this one as well, like, is it is a fucking shout it out loud cast album review crew fucking on the chart for one of the most annoying things and that is the lyrics of being back on the streets again everybody's going Everybody wild loves in the streets that in the, 80s. the boys are back in town yeah. everybody's going yeah. crazy in the streets wild in the streets wild in the what streets what fucking streets are you talking about where are you walking <laughs> that these streets are filled with crazy people i fucking hate it it's the most annoying lyric and they're always doing those yeah. songs well you could be like rainbow and just be on the street of dreams yeah, you could do that well, too well, yeah. that's what street he's on he's but on the, the street of dreams and then it's always bad boys the bad boys they're back in town and Fucking yeah. bad boys are running wild. Oh, oh yeah. are they? <laughs> settle down. <laughs> All you settle the fuck down. All right. <laughs> let's go to what I I don't know. I have like six titles to the next song. Me but too. let's let's go. All right. So we go to S A T O. We will eventually break down the numerous potential meanings of this song. But mm-hmm. holy fuck, this song. Oh my god. I mean, oh, I, I keep gushing. We keep using that word here. So yeah. it's, it starts off with that little haunting, another creepy kind of acoustic intro. Where is this song going? And then the song just fucking blows your brains out. And it is the, yeah. to me, to me, this song ties together everything that we have listened to thus far under the song. The band is mm. going the band is going a hundred miles an hour. The riff is to me. So to me, I know a lot of people don't like this because I bash a lot of what Iron Maiden does. Our buddy, Joey Casada bashes a lot of what Iron Maiden does. Cause it's the same galloping kind of thing. I don't, I mean, I know Joey Casada. to me. This <laughs> is how you make a galloping hard rock metal song. The drums yeah. are driving. The guitar is driving and Zach, as a ba- it was funny. I was so glad that you were coming on for this. What is going on in the bass in this in this song is insane. The the, yeah. run, the the bass runs that are going on in this are just and they're so pronounced. Yes. They're not. Yep. They're they're up in the, the front of the mix when you hear this. And I just think it's it. This is just an incredible song. And it might be because we don't hear it every day because it hasn't beaten into the ground like a lot of the other songs on here. But this song just mm-hmm. crushes for me on this album. I, I mean, I couldn't agree more. It, it's it's uh, the bit, first off the bit, Bob Daisley's bass playing, which doesn't get uh, uh, talked about enough, especially if you listen to Rainbow and and these two records and yeah, anything and Bark at the Moon. I mean, anything that you've ever heard him do, he is extremely underrated bass player because he uses a pick his note choices his bass lines just yeah. even going to crazy train there's this bass line in the verse it's 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 it's, it's um counterpoint so it's not on the beat he's doing that running with the devil thing down 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 but then he does which is r&b twos and fours no one else would have thought of that. I, I mean, I don't know anybody that would have thought of that baseline. It just, it, but it def- you can't play that song without that baseline. Yep. Uh, he is so, uh, he has this kind of R&B thing in his playing, but he also can shred mm. when need be. And he doesn't, so yeah, this, this, his bass lines are just insane in this particular tone. Um, yeah. But if I play, if I may play devil's advocate, Good. There's a song again, like you're looking at these two records as kind of like sister records, you know, and they're sequenced very similarly. The first record has a song that I love that if I had to, if I had a gun to my head, they go, what's the song that you could go? I, I can live without this song if I had to. If I had to take one song off the record and, and you know, and, and I have no choice in the matter. The first record, you know where I'm going with this. There's a song, No Bone Movies, mm-hmm. which I adore. Which but sounds I know that that so last- different than anything else on that album. Yes, and it was added at the very last minute, which it sounds like it was added last minute for time because they needed a new, another song to fill in the time. 
I love those rock and roll tunes that are written super quick. You know, it was probably recorded as fast as it was written. Awesome. Some of the best songs in the world. And I like the song. It's not a shitty song. This band would never do shitty music ever. This is why it sucks that they only made two records. Because the next record would have been another 10. You know what I mean? But if I have to pick one that I don't need to ever, that I have to lose on the record, this would be the song. I hate to say Damn. I'm sorry. I know. No, I know. Okay. This is, is this, Tom, this is our first is fight. Is this payback this is for tonight? Be... Is this payback for what I said about tonight? No, it's no, because tonight you're wrong. And, and oh. in this situation, <laughs> I'm a hundred percent right. As I always am. I'm just, it's just, this is an opportunity for the school year to learn, you know, like that you're oh, always okay. wrong. And Thank I'm always you. right. This is why I'm glad you're Only here. When you agree with me, when you agree okay. with me, then you're always right. Gotcha. No, I, gotcha. I mean, honestly, don't get me wrong. It's a fucking amazing song. The playing on it's sick. Yeah, the 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 speed of it is great. The 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 gal, the everything is great. Ozzy's vocals are great. Guitar playing sick, but it's uh, if I have to say if I have to use a word to describe it, indistinguished. Only in comparison to tonight, I can sing the chorus of tonight. I can sing the chorus of Little Dolls. I can sing the chorus of Dire and Madman, sort of, and I'll obviously Over the Mountain. I, you know what I mean. I'll yeah, help no, you. I'll, 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 I'll get, I'll get, I'll get to a point that I think will will, will ch- maybe change your mind. So uh, I figured it out. So, by so, the way, it's not. I'm not saying it's a shitty song. It is an amazing no, no, no. song. It's like maybe what we always the title say about, doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Something's not. No, it's just Zach, like, you know. it's okay if you don't like hard rock. It's okay. You can just tell me. Just yeah, like, right. Well, you know, you you set, you're still in the on collection starting to get <laughs> the tonight. Titanic <laughs> soundtrack. We'll call you. Hey, I'm not the one who likes tonight. You're the one who likes tonight. You like that's right. Because I know I have I have taste, and you clearly don't. All right. So this is by all four of them. Um, so let me get to the titles. Sharon says that the oh. song is called S-A-T-O after Sharon Arden yep. and Thelma Osborne. Yep. Thelma was his wife, Ozzy's wife at the time of this record. Mm-hmm. And Sharon was the girlfriend on the side. Mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. we also got, wait a minute. Sharon had a boyfriend at the time. His name was Adrian. Adrian. So Sharon Adrian, Thelma, and Ozzy. Yep. That was Ozzy's girlfriend, uh, wife at the time. Others have said it's called, it's, it was originally called Strange Voyage by mm-hmm. Bob Daisley. And then another one I heard was called Sail Away to Oblivion or that's, Sail that's Across cool. or Sail Across the Ocean. That's the one that I hear more. Com- that's the one that I hear more than, uh, than others uh, as being a legitimate, the, the, the Sharon Osborne bullshit. I've sail across the ocean is the one. Well, that she I've heard changed it after she fired everybody. Yeah. And she yeah. said, no, it means me. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Um, the bass is awesome on this. I fucking love it. Oh, yeah. Pronounced. I put it's a hard rock. It built the build up to the hard rock and song. And this is the part that I will say that I agree with you, Zach. There's something about Ozzy's voice. The melody yeah, right. that he keeps in this song, it's going yeah. fast. And this is the part you're like, well, there's no real catchy chorus in there. These are the parts. There are certain phrases that he says in lines, and he does it in like three different spots where his voice goes up. Tried the rest, found the best, and it goes up. What you've learned and what you've earned. And then also dreams unfold, seek the goal. Like that accent he puts on those lines while still singing at the same and keeping the melody going. I think they fucking, I look for it in the song. I love it when it comes on. Yeah. I think this is one of my favorite deep cuts of Ozzy that he's yeah. ever done. And I, you know, just the corniness of the, oh, what does it mean? Yeah. Maybe it's something about satanic or something like you get yeah. it. The solo's great. It's a great song. And what I will, uh, I'll d- say to you, um, Zach is, it's like how Tom and I, when we review Kiss records, like mm-hmm. ah, music from the Elder, ah, Unmasked, it's not, I don't have, I put it in number 20 of their solo, of their albums. It's still a Kiss album. It's still better than fucking yeah. 900 fucking. So although you might say, ah, you know, I don't go to this song, it's still done by this band. And it's probably better than yeah. fucking nine out of 10 things you find on the radio. So, Dude, if I this came it. on the radio right now, I would crank it the fuck up and and love yeah. every second of it. Yeah. All, all I'm saying is that this this band never wrote or did a bad song ever. Um, right. The B side, like like this, would be for me a kick ass B side. You know, mm-hmm. like if I got the, if I got the CD and it didn't have that B side on it, I'd be pissed. I'd still listen to the CD. Yep. You would get you know, tonight, saw, a tonight live acoustic version. I, you know what? I'm actually that would, that thinking would, that about actually it. Be, I think I'm going to call over. I think it's going to happen. I think, I think I'm call Eric. you need to call one of your buddies up 
and you two need to fucking do an acoustic version and put it up on YouTube. How's that? Do, I, do you, I think I think we're good. Get it, get it done. Get a couple guys yeah. together and do it. Yeah. Um, by the way, I looked it up. It was the EP. It's like the Mr. Crowley. They call it Ozzy Osbourne Live EP. And that's, that's what I got. Yeah. And that song is called You Said It All. Yeah. And by the way, I remember the chorus of that song more than I remember the hook in SATO. And I only listened to that song when that EP came out on Picture Disc because I didn't want to wreck the Picture Disc. Mm. Which is probably wrecked now because it's been in my record collection for like a hundred years. But, <laughs> yeah. um, but at the time I didn't want to play it too many times. So I didn't want to wreck it, but I remember that chorus. And not that, you know, if you have a memorable chorus, that makes, that means it's a better song. It's just that, you know, 38. Yeah. You, many years you don't later, go to it. You don't remember. 40, it. Yeah. If, if someone goes, Oh, you remember that B side? You said it all. I'm like, all right. On. You said it all. Ah, nah, 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 nah. Like I, I can sing yeah. it back and there's something powerful uh, to me. In, in a song, if you can, like, whatever, 40 years later, just actually recall that chord that I probably listened to five times in my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, do yeah. you remember? I, st- I still can sing it kind of thing. Whereas, you know, SATO, 10 out of 10, it just doesn't stick with me as something do like you, Tonight uh, or Over the Moon. Do yeah. you remember you looking at me, looking at you? All from Blizzard. I I, I, that's from Blizzard. I yeah. I, have, I do remember that song. I remember liking it a lot, but I can't remember the chorus. But that doesn't mean it's not a great song. I, I'm sure it's, I it's very poppy and hooky. It's good. Yeah. It's good. But yeah. But the sad I, I thing about that again, is yes. I have it on the 2002 version, and now I'm pissed that I have it on that. Yeah. On the, oh. on the remix that they came out with. And it's like, ah. Um, but the no, SAT is a great, it's a great song, dude. And I'm, I'm glad it's on the record. It's just one of those. Yeah. No, I get you. Like, it's a nine instead of a ten for me. You know, I that's feel it. you. All right, yep. let's find out what the last closing track of this album is. So we finish up the album with the title track, "Diary of a Madman," and we talked about this before. Zeus, Zach, we'll talk about it again. This, to me, is a heavy metal classical piece of music. Where, so at the beginning of it, that that again, that gothic classical acoustic sound. And then when the full band kicks in, like I literally, you get like you get goosebumps, and and, and then and then the, then the band kind of pulls back, and then you get Ozzy singing with that creepy acoustic, and then again, it's to me, it's a very like cinematic song. I think it's a great way to end the album. And then when I'm listening to this, what really yeah. would have what would would have been cool is if. All the things that like Metallica and Kiss were doing with them performing with symphonies. If this saw, if, like, if oh. Ozzy ever did, if Ozzy ever did Diary of a Madman with the London Symphony Orchestra or something like that, it would have been fucking absolutely mind blowing. And and when mm-hmm. I hear this, when I hear this song, I'm picturing like like, I mean, there are like strings in this, probably like effects or whatever. But I I just think it's it's it really sums up the album and Ozzy as a whole with this. I think it's a it's a perfect title track way to end the album i fucking agree i i think this song is a masterpiece yeah um I, I you know this is a perfect way to close the record it's there was nothing like this when 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 this song came out and the fact that it is such an epic tune it has chords to this day that that whole that acoustic intro which every kid that was learning guitar had to learn that intro and the verse is is in the oddest time. It's in like thirteen eight, you know. <laughs> yeah. And that's 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 what prog bands and and Zappa and people like that would write songs in thirteen eight. And yet the verse is so catchy, you can sing along to it. The fact that you can sing along to something in thirteen is thick. I'm doesn't, glad you brought up, happen. I'm glad you brought that up, Zach. Because like once again, as I'm listening to this, I'm like, I'm glad Zach's going to be on here. You're right. The time signature of the verses is like what, like you, it's almost like it's like skipping a beat because it's so off mm-hmm. kilter. It's, it, yeah. you're right. it's, it's, it's like you said, it's proggy. It's like something Rush would do. It's just, it, but, it, but I think it, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's what it's makes pro- it, it's, yeah, it's what makes it so interesting to listen to. It's, it's, it catches you unaware because you're sitting there going, something's a little different, but it's still sing songy. You know, mm-hmm. you're singing along with it if you have the lyric sheet or whatever. And, and, and then the, 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 the pre-chorus, I don't know if there's really a chorus, but the, I guess the, the, the part that's after the verse is in six, eight, 
which is mm-hmm. dun, 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 dun. and again you don't notice that the time change you're just singing a lot the, the fact that they can they made that very singable in these bizarre time signatures and it doesn't feel like they're being proggy or or knowledgeable or trying to be all fancy it, it right so that that alone gives it a kind of like larger than life no pun intended um <laughs> in quality to it but it's the melody line i don't know who came up with the melody line for the verse but it it it, it the, i mean it fits it perfectly um ozzy sings with this real like like he's singing for his life you feel like like he's like there's like in there's pain. this energy of, yeah he's in pain and Passion. his life's being threatened and it, yeah it sounds like this gothic dracula movie and he's being chased through his field by guys with pitchforks and torches yeah. and yeah. they're trying to kill him and he's singing for his uh for his freedom and his you know um so that that adds the quality of his of his singing is amazing on it the the solo in this song i was i was a new guitar player and i was at a guitar school in kent connecticut and and the teacher at the time, Randy, was bringing new ideas into rock. And, of course, every kid would come into your class and say – it was a camp, a sleepaway camp. And every day you'd get up and go to classes way out in the country in Connecticut. And everyone came in and would like, I want to learn this Alan Holdsworth thing. I want to learn this. And I just wanted to learn all this Randy stuff. Yeah. So I brought <laughs> Diary of a Madman in and and – the teacher who was a jazz guy was so impressed that we were listening to music of this quality mm, Wow! that it was, it was presented to us in kind of a pop rock d- digestible format kind of thing with catchy choruses. But yeah. the fact that he didn't know who Randy Rhodes was, but he could tell that this was a guy that understood music, you know, well, yeah. and he was That's blown awesome. away that we were listening to something of this level. Cause he was in like Jocko Pistorius. So he really was, was pleasantly surprised that I brought him this instead of like, I don't know, something stupid. So uh, uh, he taught me the solo to Die of a Madman. And to this day, man, I don't remember a guitar solo in rock or metal that has these kind of, it's not even a diminished, I forgot what the mode is, but it, it, it's, it's, it shouldn't work, but somebody with Randy, with his, his, his knowledge of music, he makes this solo work. If you played it in any other song, it just wouldn't work, but the solo works and, I can't remember what, why, but, but it's the, so that guitar solo in the song is, is, is short, but it's incredible the way it's structured, not flashy. Yeah. It just has these notes that had ne- I had never heard before in music, you know, in yes. classical, I heard it, but I never heard it in music before. Yeah. And then the way it ends and it builds up with the chanting and, you know, oh. the, and, and the, the goth opera in there and the flames are getting higher. And, yeah. You know, it's like you're, you know, you're, it's like La Boheme or some kind of, you know, thing at Lincoln Center. And all of a sudden, dun, dun, curtain. And that's how the and, album you know, ends. Fucking perfect. It's, it's just, it's operatic. It was the first operatic record I had ever heard, song I ever heard. And mm-hmm. it just, yeah, it was riveting, man. It's so awesome. 10 out of 10. A couple of things I'm going to jump off of before I get into my stuff that you mentioned. Uh, it's Diary of, Mad- of Madman, all four of them are on this. The other song that reminds me of this, and this wasn't too long ago. Do you ever hear Back, to, uh, Back on Earth by Ozzy? Oh, yeah. Love that song. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the video and stuff, and it's fucking yeah. like Nosferatu and shit. Yeah, yeah, it's got exactly. That fucking, it's got that Victor, like that haunting vocal, and he's like pleading that he's like, you know, back on Earth, come back from the dead, and what? Do you, yeah, yeah. And that's what this reminds me, almost like the sister song to Diary of a Madman, except nobody's doing the guitar like this. Uh, yeah, yeah. The other thing is, I've told this story on our show before. Uh, I've had, a, I had a uh, in junior high, we had a music teacher, Mister Stevens, and kids brought in their music, just like you said, and Mister Stevens heard somebody brought in <laughs> breaking the law. And he heard this, and he took the fucking record, and he opened the window, and he threw it out the window. He said it was the worst. <laughs> like, you, can you just picture this guy? Listen, breaking the law, breaking the He said it was the worst <laughs> fucking shit he's ever heard in his life. <laughs> and I, I had brought in Rock of Ages, but he thought breaking the law was the most insulting thing anybody's ever brought him in. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's awesome. What, versus what you say is your guy's like, wow. In, in, in addition to that, while preparing for this episode i go on youtube and you go in that rabbit hole there's a clip of this classical music guy you know they put on those uh youtube clips where somebody hears somebody from oh, yeah, uh, yeah, hip-hop yeah. world here's uh you know oh, master yeah, yeah. Of I love, love this. 
Those are hilarious. There's a clip of a classical musician professor listens to this and his fucking mind is blown. He's like, I cannot believe they're doing this. He's like, this Mm -hmm. sounds like more like prog rock. How is he doing? This is work. He goes in the lyrics and these vocals. This is brilliant. He couldn't stop gushing over this. Like, you don't understand what he's doing here. And he was talking about shit that you're talking about that a non-musician like me is going over my head. Yeah. Oh, yeah, fucking 14 twelfths and 15 and whatever. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. he's mentioning all this shit. And he's like, how is he doing it? And it's working. He's, he's changes it to this. Wow, that's strange. I've never heard it done like this. And he's just yeah. fucking enthralled by it. And that's Randy. Well, anyways, I wanted to go off and tell you guys about that. I'm with you, beautiful, haunting, open. This is like that Mr. Crowley organ kind of scary yeah. Victorian atmosphere. And then at that 35-second yeah. mark when the guitar comes in, you're just like, what the fuck? This awesome. isn't, yeah. yeah, this isn't any fucking cheesy shit. This is beyond a fucking level. Uh, the lyrics are great. And that part where he keeps singing that part, sanity now is beyond me. There's no choice. Just brilliant shit. The drums yep. are insane on this. That 235 yeah. mark in the break, it reminds me of that break on Revelations, Mother Earth, where all of a sudden that beautiful piano kind of solo comes in, and then the acoustic guitar comes in, then it goes right to the rock. It's a nice yeah. little, oh, okay, we're in a calm area now. The yeah, fucking, yeah. you know, uh, doctor whatever hasn't taken his medicine yet. Oh, we're calm. Yeah. Everything <laughs> hasn't fucking snapped. Yet. <laughs> and then I saw another video where Ozzy's talking about this and he's explaining that R- Randy was like, Oh man, I'm just fucking not happy about the solo on this song. I feel like it's rushed. And he's like, well, take as much fucking time as you need. And he's like, yeah. and he comes up with that brilliance and he was rushed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he I felt know. Rushed. Like what would he do if he had time to do shit like that? Man, That's no, it's amazing. Fucking nuts. And then yep. that 527 yeah. mark where those vocals come in. Like it reminds me of like fucking the devil's advocate, Al Pacino and mm-hmm. fucking what's in yeah. the and the devil's coming out and the angels and all or it's yeah. like um like the what's the movie? The Shining. Like he's oh, running yeah. in the maze oh, yeah. at the end, and you can yeah, picture yeah. like yeah. the voices singing that stuff, and then all of a sudden, yeah. like you said, the curtain drops, it's over. Yep. It's oh. just you're like decompress. Yeah. Yeah, it's a 10. Yeah. Yep. Let's yep. go. Like the op- the opera ends. It's a ten. Yep. Everyone's yep. on their feet, standing and applauding. And yeah. Like, what that's the what fuck did like. I just see? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's Diary of a Madman. Tom, want to give your overall thoughts, and then we'll go to Zach, and we'll then we'll do uh, list the album tracks, rank them. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it. One thing that I didn't mention, I figured I'd save it till now. So, I, it's it's such a step up in production. And songwriting, it's like Blizzard of Oz had to walk so Diary could run, you know, like that old statement mm. there, you know, it's such a step up. It doesn't take anything away from Blizzard. And mm. it, it, it's in spending so much time, whenever we do these album review crew episodes or whenever we do music, it's like all I listen to, like in the car, I'll throw the vinyl on and listen to it. And you pay attention to every aspect of it. And it's such a killer album. And the, the biggest shame of it all is that there's only eight fucking songs on it. It's too damn short. Zach, what about you, buddy? Um, It's funny because as you were talking about it, I was remembering when an album came out and listening to it and just, it was, um, first of all, it's a, it's a timeless, brilliant record, 10 out of 10 as a rock and metal record. Um, just, they just don't get any better than that. They just get different. Yep. but they don't get any better. But um, when Blizzard came out and I just, dis- we discovered Ozzy and then we were just, you know, in- in- insatiable Blizzard of Oz fans. Couldn't wait for the next record to come out. Then the next record came out only like six months later. And all of a sudden we have another Blizzard of Oz. And it's in many ways, like you said, it's a step up. All the things that are brilliant about Blizzard, they did it on, they recreated it on this record and they added even more to it at the time we were excited about the next record. Mm. So when I listen to this record, I get kind of sad because I remember yep. how I felt at 13 or 14, remembering that I, after diary, 
I was like, oh my God, I can't. When's the new record coming out? When's the new Ozzy record? We would call the record store going, is there another Ozzy record coming out? I mean, it sounds funny today, but it'd be, and the only thing I can describe it is as if it was like the first Van Halen record came out, the second Van Halen record came out, and then Eddie died in a plane crash. Exactly. Ooh. Yep. What could, yep. what could, what could have been kind right. of thing? It was right. like, you know, looking back, it was a tragedy. It is a tragedy. He was a genius. The, the worst thing is we're never going to hear that band ever again. Mm -hmm. But in retrospect, it sucks. But at the time, it was just like you just it was such a sucker punch that, that there wasn't going to be a third record, you know. Yeah. So this is kind of a bittersweet record for me. But yeah. that's just that. Uh, having said that, man, this this I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. Yeah. It just doesn't get any better in any genre. You could play this for a guy who's in, like you said, the classical guy or a guy that's in the R and B. You, you recognize when something is this good, and this is as good as it gets. Yep, Zeus. Yeah, I, I'm gonna uh, say the same thing. I I've always said, and when we did all our albums we reviewed so far on the show, that uh, my favorite guitarist is Randy Rhodes. My favorite guitar album is A Blizzard of Oz. Now. Mm. It is still is Blizzard of Oz. I'm not going to say it's different. Um, the big thing for me is I always love hearing about Randy Rhodes and people telling me things I don't know because I'm not a guitar player. And I remember mm. the first couple times I heard it, and I thought it was a fluke. And then as more and more time went on, it's not a fluke. It's all the people that told me, yeah, yeah, you think his guitar playing is there, and that's for you because that's more melodic and you get that. You have no idea in such a short period of time, how much even better his guitar playing is on diary. And mm -hmm. when we had Rudy Sars on, what a privilege it was listening to him tell us about Randy and playing with him and the stuff that Randy could do and just the amazing virtuosity that he had in knowledge of stuff that he was just inventing because he had that classical background and he, this hard rock guitar legend that was just growing. And he's like, I have no idea how good he could have been, yeah. but how much yeah. better they say that and harder. And as you were saying, you're that person that you met was telling you about how much the guitar is just in another level on this album. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's a tra it's a it's a, it, I mean it, this out this out more than Blizzard makes me sad. Yeah, because yeah. at least with, at least at least Blizzard, you know that Diary was to come. This is yeah, it. yeah. This yep. is this is the end of the line of yep. of the. This was the best music that we knew at the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, Van Halen was a party of one. There was never going to be a band better than Van Halen until Blizzard of Oz came out. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, there's not only a band that's as good as Van Halen; they're doing it differently. But there's a they're 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 just as good. So now we have this other band that we could obsess over, and their careers cut short in yeah. two albums. Somebody, it's, just, it's yeah, yeah. Somebody recently just put up something about Blizzard of Oz and Diary of a Madman, and yeah. I just retweeted. And I just si simply said, "Not sure I can name a better in in the hard rock genre." I'm not going down that Beatle fucking shit where all the fanatics yeah. come out. I'm just saying in the hard rock genre. Not sure I can name a better back to back album. Maybe Highway to Hell. Back in Black, I don't know. Yeah. I, I keep Kiss out of it. Kiss is in its own world. I can't count them against yeah. anybody else. But other than <laughs> that, for me, I'm not sure it gets better than these two in a row. Mm. I, I agree. It's tough. It's a shame. Yep. yep. All right. Well, at, so, least we, at least we got these two, right? Yep. Yeah. And here comes the hard part. But before we get that, Tom and I are going to rank that stuff after you leave, Zach. However, okay. I want to hear from you, which is your favorite, this or Blizzard? I mean, that to me, they're one record. They're one. It's like this is like physical graffiti or Tommy or or uh, what any other famous double album because yeah. they only came out six months apart from each other. Yep. Yeah. So they're kind of like Irish twins or something. You know, they're they're really <laughs> close. Uh, but you can. But you don't, you're traveling. You can only take one. <laughs> Fuck. I don't know, man. I mean, you can't. It's tough. It's tough. I, I mean, if I have to only take one. Okay. If I have to take one, I would say diary. If I have to, yep. just because I don't listen to it or I didn't listen to it as much as yeah. blizzard and it's blizzard radio. Gets played. Yeah. Blizzard's on the radio way more than diary. Yep. So I would, I would yeah. say that, you know, mm. okay. Thanks. Right. Thanks for making me choose by the yeah. way. That's yeah. what we do. No problem. 
No problem. Mm-hmm. Sharon's going to write you a mean letter after this. and you'll. Oh, I'm sure she is. You I'm motherfucker. Sure she will. Um, <laughs> Tom, want to start yeah. us off? Song number eight. All right. So we're going to rank the songs as song number eight. Now, uh, I will preface this. I always do this whenever we rank the songs. This is now there's only eight songs to me. This is the rare occasion, and it makes it easier because there's only eight songs. There are zero skips on this album. Yep, zero. Agreed. Agreed. So, so it's e- for me, it was very easy to rank the top of my top eight. So I am not doing this because of Zach. I'm sorry. These were already pre-listed. I have uh-huh. tonight. I have tonight at number eight. Oh, in terms of, okay, gotcha. So that, so that, so out of the, so we're going to, we'll go eight and then we'll end with our number one. So I have tonight at number eight. Zach, what's your eight? What do you, what's your, what's your, uh, la, what's your bottom ranked song? I know. Tom, it's what's it like? What's it like to be so wrong all the time? I know. Curious. Cause that, cause now he's going to have SATO as his eighth song. Yeah. Uh, okay. If I have to pick a number eight, yeah, it's, it's a great song. It's the one that I'm, yeah, SATO would be my number eight. Only because I can't recall it as easily as the other ones, but that's it. But okay. yeah. All yeah, right. It's tough. No. It's tough ranking these. It really it's is. Tough. And again, yeah, the- my number eight here would be maybe top 100 song of the songs we reviewed yeah. because I think this album is just that good. So I'll go number eight. I'll say You Can't Kill Rock and Roll. Okay. okay. Fair enough. Seven, Tom. Uh, that's, act- that's actually my number seven. You Can't Kill Rock and Roll. Yep. Zach. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say that that's my number seven, just because of the length. I didn't realize it was that long, but now that yeah. you mention it, yeah, it does get a little logy. So we ruined so, it yeah. for you, okay? <laughs> yeah, I was my number one. Now I had to switch. So fuck yeah, all right. y'all. That's Follower. What that's what Follower. we do. All right, number seven for me. I put believer, and again, I love the song. I just, something's oh, got to be there. You are hurting my soul. Uh, all right, number six for me. Uh, yeah, this is just impossible. But number six for me is Little Dolls. Zach, what do you got at six? Um, that's a hard one, man. Because little, uh, yeah, I would say that. Okay. okay, you made a good case because I think Believer is better than than better than Little Dolls. Okay, I'll go that. Zeus number six. So six uh, for me. Uh, he ain't gonna like it, but six is tonight. That's fine. Fair enough. Again, it's a great song. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, number five for me is the title track, Diary of a Madman. Wow. Zach. Ooh. Yeah. It's tough. Shit. This is going to, okay, this five for me is Believer. Ooh. Okay. Great, great tune, but uh, I mean, it's, it's. Something's got to be there. Okay. Something's got to be there. So yeah, I'll pick that one. Okay. Zeus. And five. five little dolls. Okay. Um, this is when th- I have, even during this episode, I will acknowledge I have changed my top four rankings. So they're, mm. they're so they're so fluid right now for me. Right now, number four, flying high again. Oh, I know. I'm sorry, Zach. Um, uh, what do we got left tonight? Flying again over the mountain. I remember. Okay, okay. Out of those four, tonight goes here. Okay, okay. No, number four for me over the mountain. Ooh. Oh, that's interesting. Wow, that's actually my number three is over the mountain, and- Zach. And you heard us gush about it. It's that good. Yeah, that's that's how yeah. good it is. Um, boy, this is now nah, this is getting really hard. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. What we got left? But yeah, exactly. <laughs> he wasn't wrong. Uh, over the mountain, playing again. Dire man, and Christ. Um, just, just a boy. <laughs> yeah, that's just, I say fanfare. Fanfare is <laughs> yeah, right. There you number go. three. Um, damn man. Okay, I uh. Fuck. All right. It's got to be flying high again. Okay. Sucks, but yeah, it's got to be. Okay. Uh, uh, this is when you got. Uh, well, actually, I'm sorry. Zeus says it's three. Sorry. Yeah. I went to Diary of a Mad Men is three. Mm. Okay. All right. This is when you guys are not going to, you're going to roll your eyes at me. But uh, number two for me, I got Believer. Whoa. Yep. You Zach, love that. That's interesting. Zach, what do you got for two? Well, two's. Over the mountain, okay. And the only reason why Over the Mountain is not number one for me, if I, because it's just gets played so much. Yeah, fair. Which kind of think, takes a lot I of think the that, shine I think, off of it. Yeah, I think that's what happened with me with Over the Mountain. Fly it high again. They just kind of suffered. They penalized for fatigue, which isn't fair. But yeah, 
Zeus, number two. I'm going to be shocked because this is going to be one of the top ranked songs, except for Zach put it last. I have it as number two, S A T O. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Zeus, because that is the number one ranked song <laughs> on Diary of a Madman, Zach. Is it really? I, I have it at number one. I swear Boy. to God. Yep. I mean, listen, if, if, if you got to be wrong, you might as well be completely wrong. I'm going yeah, to very... go out in a blaze of glory. I'm very baby. proud of you. Exactly. Th- thank you. Thank you. So what do you got at number one? You my, have my number one is the title the Diary of Madman title there, song. There you go. Yep. That's a masterpiece. Yep. It's a masterpiece, not just on this record, but in any genre to me. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, I have that uh, as no, why, why watch me go listen to SATO and go, oh fuck, he's right. That song fucking rips. Tom was right. <laughs> it does rip. It does rip. Yeah. I know. God damn it. <laughs> well, for me, I have flying high again. It's just it's one of those songs, even like Crazy Train, you hear it a million times. Yep. I don't get fatigue of it. Um, I, I still fucking love it. And I believe that's our number one ranked song. Yep. Between all of us is flying yep. high again. If you do the, the high- average. Yeah. yeah, it's the it's the highest ranked one that we got between the three of us flying high again. Yep. Wow. Yep. Well, that's Dire of a Madman. What we do next is this. Tom, your favorite part? What makes you rock hard like Paul Stanley? Oh, God. We got to change the name of this segment. Um, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, I love, I still love, I love going to the movies and I love seeing stuff in IMAX. And I just saw Dune part two in IMAX Ooh. and it blew Ooh. my fucking brains out. The movie was, first of all, the movie was awesome. And it's tough for me to sit through long movies because I get antsy. This movie was two hours and 47 minutes long, and I didn't, oh. get, up, and I didn't get up once. I didn't even move. Wow. Seeing it in IMAX on that theater in the, in the sounds, I mean, your seats are shaking, your brain. It's just, it's one of the most stunning movies you've ever seen. And, and now, mm. now, Grant, you have to, you kind of have to be into that type of stuff, that kind of fantasy sci-fi. If you're not, you're going to fall asleep in 20 minutes. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm rolling with Dune part two. It was fucking killer, killer movie. And if you can find an IMAX theater near you, you have, this is one of those movies you can't watch on your TV at home. You got to see it in a theater and you really should try to see it in IMAX. So cool. Cool. All right, Zach, what makes you (laughs) rock hard, buddy? (laughs) Depends on the day. (laughs) Um, Niagara. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Zach Theron for Cialis. <laughs> um, t- uh, let's see, shit. Well, I mean, just getting ready to go on tour. Nice. If that's if that's fair enough. I, yeah, we, you know, we're, of course we're, it's fair. We, yeah, we got a. I'm really excited about and this. Um, this is about this is segueing into, into plugs. Yeah, but we got a we got a cover EP coming out um, April 20th, and I'm really excited for that to be out because some of the songs we've done are just. Or some of my favorite, you know, rock and metal songs. This is Corey Taylor band, correct? Sorry. Yeah. This is the Corey Taylor band CMFT and awesome. Uh, it's just killer. And, and I heard the mixes and I'm super stoked about that, but actually just like playing guitar, getting ready to go on tour and just getting all my ducks in, in a, in a row, you know, yeah. my gear and going to my guitar repair guy, uh, here, both of them and, and, and just getting my, my stuff ready and, Getting fired up, you know, going on the road. It's that that's a real that's really exciting. And um, what's the EP called? The EP is called CMF to be or not to be. <laughs> ah, nice. Yeah, okay. That was Corey's okay. title. Uh okay. it's um came out great. This new one, we um it's already listed, so uh there's a we did a Zeppelin song called Ten Years Gone. Oh, and, oh, yeah, oh and, 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 we and I'll tell you something. That. Oh. This is this is you want to know what gets me rock fucking hard? Yes, tell us. We, you don't have to show did, us, just tell us. No, no, I'm gonna fucking show both of you <laughs> so you know what it's really about. No, um, we did uh we did Ten Years Gone live. Oh sweet. and Corey went Corey we, we couldn't do it without a vocals. That one's like so weird without vocals, right? Mm-hmm. So we just went like Corey goes, you know what, I'm gonna go in the vocal booth and just sing along just so we know where we are, because it's Tough, you know, Zeppelin yeah. verse chorus, verse chorus, especially that so, song, especially yeah. that song. Yeah, and we did the whole thing live. Corey sang the live vocal, and then I went in and did the solos, 
I think there's like two solos in there in one take overdubbed it. And when I did it, we were done. The producer's like, you don't need another take. That's your take. Wow. And it came out so good. We sent it to, I don't know if you guys remember Carol Miller. She was a DJ on WPLJ in New York. He okay. does a show called Get the Let Out every Sunday. Oh, wow. On, okay. On PLJ. She's been doing it since the 80s. And we sent it to her, and she said, that's the best Zeppelin cover I've ever heard in my entire life, and I've oh, heard them all. Wow. Wow. Bravo to you guys. So awesome. that makes me fucking rock hard, and I'll show you if you don't believe me. <laughs> so. Yeah. Can't wait to hear it, buddy. That's awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks. Are you? Uh, comes out. Yeah, good. No, no. Go. When's it come out? It comes out when? No, I was out. I'll, I'll plug it later. Yeah, I'll plug it at the end. Plug it after. Yeah, we'll yeah. give you some plugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Zeus, what makes uh, you rock hard? Well, <laughs> there you for go. me, anything that's Star Wars related. Yes, oh, I finally got to catch up and saw the the series Andor. I don't know if you've seen that. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. that's with that actor Diego Luna. Yep. Who I think was the main one of the main characters in um the star wars prequel right yeah yeah so he was in rogue one and uh it just tells his backstory i I thought it was kind of like oh my god am i gonna like this but by the end like anything in star wars and the series that they're doing now the storytelling so good and they and it match up with the characters and stuff it was a great series i really enjoyed it i believe there's a second season coming out which will be the final season of this yep. and, yep. It, nice. and it's great and if you like those star wars series the new ones the mandalorian this um there's a couple other ones too that came out the obi-wan one as well um yep. yeah i mean i love the series i'm not a Joey Casada buy the action figures type of fucking Star Wars beat. <laughs> but I, I like the t- I watched the series and this was yeah. a good one. So yeah. Anyways, nice. uh, what we do now, we'll just end on some plugs. Zach, where can people find you, brother? All right. Um, well, the CMF to be or not to be cover ZP from the Corey Taylor band um comes out April 20th on record store day. Oh, and awesome. there's there's some great covers on it. We do some Alice Cooper. We do one of my favorite early nineties uh, songs by a band called life, sex and death, which I don't know if you guys know this band LSD. They were out of LA they were, um, and they had a song called tank and mm-hmm. we covered that. And then um, God, we did the Zeppelin tune mm-hmm. <clears throat> And uh, just a bunch of great covers on it. It just came out great. So I'm awesome. super stoked about that. And then from May 26th until July 2nd, I'll be on the road with Corey. And we're going all over um, Europe and Turkey. Wow. And nice. and Bulgaria and all these, all these great places um, playing with DMFT. Um, that, a lot of festivals. Wow. Um, so yeah, we'll be on the road from May 26th to July 2nd, and you can get all the dates on CoreyTaylor.com or go on my Instagram page, Zach Throne, mm-hmm. um, Z A C H T H R O N E, and I post all the dates too. So that's that's my plug. Awesome, awesome. He is the awesome, the great Zach Throne. He's very wrong about S A T O, but that's okay. I'm gonna let it pass because we because we love him, <laughs> Zach. This has been a fucking blast. It's a great album. We're so glad that you joined us to just so we could all gush over it. Thank you so much, buddy. Love having you. Appreciate it. Love love being had, dude. Thank you for asking me. It was my pleasure. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, Zach. All right, Tom. That was the great Zach Throne. And we're going to continue here because we have to rank the album cover. Want to right. give your top five? Album covers. My top five is Moving Pictures. Rage Against the Machine, Blizzard of Oz, Purple Rain, and Master of Puppets. Now, Diary of a Madman, we have ranked 49 other albums. And a lot of times the rankings are very, very tricky and difficult for me to do, whether it's the cover or the album. I will tell you right now, this is one of the easiest rankings for me. Because it's time for you to ring the bell. Because Diary is number one with a bullet, baby. Wow. You really think so, huh? With a bullet. And that's just because of me and my, I love, I love like the horror stuff. I love the gothic stuff. I think the imagery, the colors, the font, everything about it is fucking 
incredible. It's still legendary to this day. We talked about it with Zach. It's still scary, creepy. It's amazing. It's it's just it's stunning. I really was uncertain if anything would be able to knock off Master of Puppets because the imagery with that is amazing. But that's a painting. And it's also an iconic album. It is. But but Master of Puppets is is a painting, which is great. Nice. Diary of a Madman is a portrait of Ozzy and his son just playing this role. Fucking amazing. Wow. Yep. All right, Tom. Uh, for me, my top five. Slide it in. At five, peace of mind. Four. Uh, three is Appetite for Destruction. Two is Blizzard. One is Hotel California. Tom, this is going top five, but it's, uh, it's going at number four for me. Okay. Uh, underneath Appetite and above Peace of Mind. Okay. Cool. All right. So that's cover. Where does it album rank? Give your top five. Yeah. This is going to be the good one because we asked Zach what's better, this or Blizzard. And now I guess we'll figure that out for ourselves. So my top five albums are at number five, Fair Warning, Shout at the Devil, Purple Rain, Moving Pictures, Master of Puppets. Now, before I rank Dire of a Madman, I'm looking at my rankings here. They're a fucking mess. Some of these are so off. Like, I, I don't know what to do. Uh, but to answer the question, I think Diary is a little better than Blizzard. A hair. Like, a hair. Because I think it sounds better. I think the songs... Okay. I think it's just the production of sounds better, but Crazy Train and I Don't Know and Mr. Crowley and Suicide Solution, it's it's tough. So I am going to bump it up a little bit above Blizzard of Oz. Dude, how the fuck do you have Blizzard of Oz at 30? That, I, that's what I told you. Dude, I have, I have the I final just realized. Count. Listen to me. This is how embarrassing this is. And I, I oh, have, shit, you do. I have, the, I have the final countdown ahead of Blizzard of Oz. Because oh. I think I'm stoned when I'm doing this. This is terrible. We, we recency said, bias. And then if you I don't agree. see where Bi- uh, Blizzard is, you just look at the list and you're like, well, I like that better than that specific album. So I guess I'll put it above that. But he didn't realize like that album should never have been that high anyways. I, Dude, I agree with that. Like, I have like a come and get it at 28. Good album. But come on. We we said that we were eventually going to do like uh, like a you know a, a we take might a have mulligan. to do it now because this is our fiftieth. Maybe we'll do a, a live cast coming up before the next uh, ARC album. Yeah, maybe just take a few mulligans. But anyways, enough of that. I am going to put Diary of a Madman at twenty seven, right below Odyssey, Ingve Malmsteen's Odyssey, and right above Europe Final Countdown. I st- I still love Odyssey. That should almost be higher. But dude, do you uh, understand uh, me? <laughs> what? Uh, just above the. <laughs> I know it's terrible, dude. It's it, these rankings are awful, and you nailed it. You nailed it. When you spend literally a full month listening to an album, mm-hmm. I've said this before. It's like the Stockholm syndrome. Like this fucking album. It's not great. just that. I'm telling you, when we do the list, like I don't fucking concentrate. I do this live. I look at the list, and I'm like, ah, I throw it here. But then I, I'm telling you, like I focus on one album, and I'm like, well, it's better than that one, but it's not as good as that. So I'll just put it in between. Then I'm like, all right, here. And That's then what you I do. realize you miss something. You're like, how the fuck do I have that album above everything here? It's true. Oh. It's tr- I, I agree. It's bad. These rankings are bad. Like fucking really bad. I, I can't, they, they annoy me. <laughs> like I have slided in at 33. <laughs> Come on. That's insane. Oh, oh yeah. This has got to be a live cast. We talked about this. We're going to have to do this, but go ahead. What do you, what do you got? What do you got diary? Yeah, actually I have it at 34, but that's okay. Well, now it's 34. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Now, now it's 34. Yeah. Now it's dropped one. It's even fucking worse. Fucking terrible. Oh I know. I'm telling you. It's, it's the, the fucking stupidity of the recency bias. I admit it. On, on, like, on, really, on what planet is the final countdown better than, <laughs> bl- better than Blizzard of Oz and slide it in? I'm sorry, but it's not better than night songs. You put it better than fucking Hotel California. What? I admit it. I admit it. I'm I'm way I'm wrong. I admit it. That's why we're gonna do a mulligan episode. But go ahead. I want to see if you have. Di- I'm sorry. I want I want to see if you have diary higher than Blizzard. All right. So my top five is Pyromania, Blizzard of Oz, Hotel California, Automatic for the People, and Purple. This is going in the top ten, but it's not going higher in the. It's not going in the top five. Oh. This is going in at number seven. Not better than Blizzard. No, it's not. Oh, okay. Um, it's going in at number seven, okay. underneath Appetite for Destruction, but above Black uh, Back for the Attack. Okay, I was, I was, I didn't know if the production in the in the 
I feel like the maturity of diary would push you towards like, no, I, I just, uh, here's the thing, Mr. Crowley. I me, agree. You guys, like I have a deep cut, like mother earth that I just fucking yeah. adore. Yeah. Right. And then you have the, I just know that album better. Yeah. I just know it better. Um, uh, blizzard, uh, diary of a madman. I, I mean, I, at a college, maybe I started listening to side two of that. Yeah. I knew fucking, uh, Blizzard of Oz since grade school. Yeah, the reason why it was so hard for me was I think, to me, I think the highs on Blizzard are higher than the highs on Diary, but I don't think Diary has that many lows. To me, I know you love Revelation Mother Earth. I'm not crazy about it. And Blizzard has D, which is a nice piece of music. And, you know, No, no, bone, bo- move, no yeah. bone Movies is kind of a throwaway. I just feel like Diary, it's only eight songs and there's no skips on any. Of it. There's nothing. There's no skips. Yeah, I think it's so I think it's a I think it's a more balanced record for me. The lows aren't as low. Like if you put yes. the albums together and made it one album, yeah, the last couple bottom songs would be from Blizzard. I, exactly, that's my point. Right? But I think I think but most the of top, the top songs the would be top from Blizzard. Songs will be from Blizzard as well. Exactly. Yep. And that's just the thing. Yep. But yep. Anyways, so. I have it at number seven. You have it at twenty-seven. Great album. Thank you, yep. Patreon members. Tom, where can people find us? They can find us on our website, shoutitoutloudcast.com. If this is your first time listening to us, we are an all-Kiss podcast that drop Kiss-related episodes every Saturday. We do these album review crew episodes once a month. And we also do dorm damage episodes, which are just fun, whatever, pop culture, music, movies, etc. Those drop usually during the week. And then we have the Zeppelin Chronicles. You can find all those on our website. And you can also find all of our links to social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Going to start getting more active on those. And links to our Amazon shopping, Amazon merch, our Patreon, all that's on our website. It's the best place for you to find everything you need. Yep. And uh, Tom, I always tell people, make sure they can DM us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, Tom is almost, are you completed the spot? Uh, spot of Spotify playlists are current right now, current updated. Yep. For all wow. shout out loudcast episodes. Wow. Fantastic. Yep. Yep. And in addition to that, we're on threads. Uh, Tom has created the TikTok account and running that right now. We've uh, started to put up the videos. We'll probably try to do videos once a week is to put something up and then we'll promote it and go to our YouTube page and subscribe there and uh, follow us and give us one of those five star child reviews they all help us and it helps grow the show and don't forget our patreon uh where uh you guys came up with this thank you so finally finally zeus gets an album after all the ones that you picked for me and also before i forget if i didn't mention it and if i did i'm going to mention it again our email shout out loudcast at gmail.com yep and send us the uh emails on the album those are always fantastic so thank you uh, Tom, what we do is we end on famous last words. Do you have any? Oh, I do. Dare to look, face the test on the eve when you set sailing. What you've learned, what you've earned, ship of joy will stop you failing. That's right, baby. Wow. Sail across the ocean. Diary. I'm a mad man. I love the way he fucking phrases that. Yeah, fucking it's awesome. Song. Yep. Walk the line again today. Share it. Oh, God. Entries of confusion. Dear diary, I'm here to stay. The fuck you ain't. <laughs> Zach Throne. Patreon members. Kiss Army. Loudcasters. Tom. Thank you. Zach Throne, huge thanks, brother. Thanks for making this a blast. Ton of fun. Patreon, thank you guys for picking another classic, awesome album. Loudcasters, everyone, Patreons, you guys rock. Zeus is always my friend. Thank you. And uh, Zach, that's Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> Peace out, Girl Scout.